<clears throat> Greetings, what is up and a very warm welcome to the channel. The sun is shining and the magpie is casting. Coming to you guys right now, about an hour late, for which I do apologise. However, unforeseen circumstances forced me to have to take care of something this morning. Um, I guess life just do be like that sometimes. So I'm coming at you all, not indeed at midday, but at one o'clock my time. But that is actually midday GMT, so kind of a save there, I guess, perhaps. Um, hey, Jono, what's going on, friend? No, I don't call this midday, although I kind of do in GMT. Um, but yeah, uh, yeah, something came up and I just, uh, I just had to take care of it. So, I mean, sorry about that, guys, but it does happen. Emma Duranke, good to see you there in chat. What's up, buddy? Uh, let's have a quick look at the schedule, though I'm sure you're all very familiar with it by now. Magpie842 coming at you Monday, Wednesday, and Friday this week, 12 o'clock, um, UK time. That's 1100 hours GMT. Um... Uh, yep, so indeed, um, and I, I don't foresee any further disruption um, in on Wednesday or Friday, so hopefully uh, hopefully everything's going to be cool as I just turn my phone on to silent. Um, dude, how, how is chat reaching out beyond chat? I'm literally getting texts saying, disgusting, you're starting an hour late. Well, you know who you are, sir. And uh, yeah, indeed, disgusting, starting an hour late, but, but these things happen sometimes. But don't worry, but don't worry. Uh, I've got what I hope is a really sweet game lined up for y'all uh, as a good one to start. Um, let's see, is there anything else I want to say before we get underway? Uh, I do have Command & Conquer Remastered, that's a real thing. I also saw that Steel Division 2 was in a sale. So I picked up Steel Division 2, had a game of that last night, seems very good. Um, so that's cool. Um, uh, I feel like there was something else I was supposed to talk about around about now. Eh? Eh? No? No? No, maybe not. Hey, what's up, A game? Good to see you, friend. Uh, so yeah, I guess we're just gonna just go. I guess we're just gonna jump on straight into this game that I've got to start here. Let's kick things off with some Company of Heroes too. Boop. Here we go. On Faemonville approach, spawning in the north, as the Overcommand West pieces is his first PFC, and spawning in the south, playing as the United States forces. It'll be. Orange Pest. And of course, um, Orange Pest uh, has frequented the channel to some extent. We have we have spotted this fine character in chat. Uh, yeah, just uh, one of the more active streamers in the game. Um, usually streaming with, uh, with good numbers of viewers and uh, putting up a great showing at the top of the game. So uh, a lucky opportunity for us here to have caught Orange Pest in the wild. Um, and uh, here we see Orange Pest playing as the American forces. A rifleman are how the American players usually engage onto the map. And uh, we're going to see a Volks Grenadier response here coming out from PFC. I don't, I don't really, don't really know where I'm going with this, but um, but it was kind of fun. <laughs> uh, let's take a look at the two commanders that these uh, two players are going to be rolling with. Looks like uh, PFC rocking with the Overwatch Doctrine, the Elite Armor Doctrine, and the Luftwaffe Ground Forces Doctrine. Orange Pest here, going to be rocking with uh, Rifle Company? Yes, I got one. Airborne Company and Recon Company. Three for three. Got three for three on the American Doctrines. I guess technically it's Recon Support Company, but you know, we're, we're kind of splitting the hairs at that point. Um... Yeah, cool. I mean, yeah, it's pr pretty standard stuff. I mean, the, these these commanders uh, sort of encapsulate the meta to a pretty a pretty pretty large extent. What's up, AKHQ? Good to have you with us this morning. Nice. Look at that. I even started an hour late, and everybody is still present and correct. Everything proceeding smoothly. Unlike these storm pioneers, that is a rough fight to be taking. That is too many garands for them. Uh, as I take a sip on my tea here. Yep, way too many grands for them to be dealing with. And yeah, dude, oh, feels like I've been ages since I cast, but I guess it was only Friday, but god damn, it feels like it's been ages. Rifle Company! I am actually really enjoying this commander now, actually. I think this commander's providing a stack of value for American players. Uh, the Sherman Easy 8 just has enough poke to actually be like a pretty credible sort of Panzer IV, Panther Intermediate sort of shit, like threat. It's It's... I just like it. It seems good. Uh, American forces do tend to have a bit of a problem with late game AT, and it's nice to find a little bit more AT resource on your Sherman chassis. Uh, the ability to put down mines with riflemen is great. Flamethrowers on your pioneers, uh, sorry, on your rear ash is also great. Uh, fire up is like, I'm not actually sure. 
I just don't know. And the phosphorus is useful. I mean, it's uh, it's expensive, but smoke that can also hurt your opponents gives you a lot of uh, lot of utility there. So, yeah, it's nice to see Rifle Commander um, kind of out there. I feel like Rifle Commander was really just hitting its stride in the game, and then Heavy Cavalry Commander was introduced. And Rifle Company has always lived in Heavy Cavalry's shadow since then, I feel like. And even today, if I'm being honest with you, although I like Rifle Company a lot, I still think um, Heavy Cav is just like... Just gives you a little bit more spice. Uh, it's just a little bit more nice. Um, da, da, da. So let's have a looky here. Uh, let's check out the bulletins. Although, slightly suspicious that we haven't got Daton here. But we're just going to have to check out the bulletins in his absence here. So it uh, looks like we're rocking with uh, Storm Pioneer's medical ability costs less. We've got the infrared half-track build faster. 75% is a lot of fastness to be getting. But like, uh, infrared half-tracks. I mean, this unit is so bad, we, we, I forgot it was in the game. It's just nobody ever builds this. Although, to be honest, the few times that OKW players do remember to build it, um, it has actually looked good in recent times. It just does provide a lot of intel, and it um, adds a lot of utility. It synergizes nicely with likes and things like that, which, um, I don't know. I'm open to seeing this do well. Um, and then we've also got Schwefferback Schleppers, a 5% increased movement speed. Okay. Wow, PFC is pretty out there with these bulletins, to be honest. Um, that is pretty radical. Uh, Orange Pest has got uh, Rifleman DPS. Uh, ambulances cost 5% less. Interesting. And Rifleman Veterancy. So fairly standard stuff there. That that ambulance one is a little bit of a departure from what we're used to being used to seeing. One has to imagine that this is going to be a battle group at HQ, um, based on the way these bulletins are looking. It's a regiment HQ. Okay, then. So I guess we're not going to see the infrared half-track built anytime soon, or... Yeah, okay. Fair enough. I guess just because we've got the bullet and it doesn't necessarily mean that we're going to be seeing a, a Battle Griff at HQ, but I was kind of excited that we might see a, an infrared half-track game for a second there. Looks like it won't be today. Captain Tech is out for our American player. Who's this? We've got a newcomer. Yandir Timo. What's up? Welcome, friend. Good to have you aboard. Welcome to the channel. Welcome to the Mag House. Um, we just do whatever I feel like, which most days is casting Company of Heroes too. so as long as you're good with that, you're going to have a good time. Uh, so, okay, yeah, Mechanized Reg is complete, and we'll see uh, as the fuel rolls in exactly what PFC is planning to do. You have to think on Fame and Vill approach, it's going to be a Panzer II. This is just a map where the speed of the Panzer II basically means that it's omnipresent, and uh, obviously it does a great job at controlling American players' primary assets. They're very strong infantry. It just speed up as it takes damage. Yeah, that's right. Weight saving. It's weight saving tactics. Absolutely. And uh, yeah, these two players just basically still getting warmed up. So um, let's talk about uh, company. Uh, sorry, Command and Conquer Remastered. So I finally managed to launch that and have a game of it yesterday. I had forgotten just how spectacularly brutal RTS in the past was. I was doing really well playing as allies against Soviets on just like playing against the AI in a skirmish, you know, just trying to warm up and remember how on earth the engine worked. And um, I was doing really well until the, the I forgot, of course, in, in Command and Conquer, tanks can just crush your infantry immediately and infantry can stack up five on a tile. So like I had some infantry stacked up and this tank would just like wiped out 10 of my infantry like in just in a, in a heartbeat. And I was just like, Oh yeah, of course, you actually have to, you actually just have to micro against that incredibly quickly and just not let your infantry stack up and stuff. I was just like, oh damn, <laughs> RTS was really tough in the past. So yeah, um, but yeah, having some fun with that one, it's really cool. Uh, I'm, I'm super glad. It seems to run really well. The music is sublime. The engine is great. The updated graphics are sweet. So I'm glad that Command & Conquer Remastered is back with us. That's really cool. Um, looks like we are going to have Panzer II and it is going to be flak half-track here from the American player. So that's how the fuel spending in the early game is going to line up here. Uh, and we've got essentially an even game. The American player is actually getting off to a pretty huge score lead advantage though. Uh, Axis forces just having trouble engaging and uh, having any meaningful presence on the central, central line of the map. And especially of course the victory points. Uh, PFC is doing a good job of connecting one fuel. So that is obviously crucial to their chances of survival and their hopes in the late game. But... Uh, yeah, uh, we're going to need to see at least one victory point being claimed, and indeed, some plucky Volks Grenadiers are going to get that done here in mid. Got to stabilize the bleeding. 120-odd uh, tickets is a lot to give up before the 10-minute mark in the game, and uh, obviously not optimal. Here comes that flak half-track. Going to 
announce its presence here, start gunning down the expensive Storm Pioneers. So uh, PFC will comprehend the nature of the American threat right now. Uh, the Panzer II is just now coming out onto the field, and soon Orange Pest will become acquainted with the the nature of murdering machine that PFC has purchased here. Uh, we've got combat in the west here as well. It looks like American forces are actually going to crush the pocket. Uh, actually, there's two squads of Volksgrenadiers here. Yeah, but the captain gets the fallback. VA are pretty potent at those kinds of ranges. And these Volksgrenadiers in this building are going to be as annoying as possible for as long as possible, but they aren't going to be able to hold on to this fuel point or this victory point. So that is actually going to probably be problems here for PFC. Uh, Panzer II is actually getting a sweet overrun here. Actually getting a nice angle onto this flak half track. Going to start getting some damage onto that. That will rack up the veterancy pretty quickly there. So that's nice to see. Amazing that the flak half track actually is just armored enough and does enough damage with the cannon that it basically just engages just fine with the Panzer II as long as the Panzer II is in arc. That's like pretty cool. MG34 has entered the roster here for PFC, and that should actually be a pretty substantial advantage. Uh, no MG available for Orange Pest. Of course, Rifle Doctrine doesn't give you an MG, and we don't have Lieutenant Tech out either. Um, Emma Duranke, there you are, buddy. What's the green icon that pops up on the Ami half track? Uh, that is a uh, defensive. So that is indicating when it's some um, stationary that it has um, that it has increased uh, accuracy, and I believe doesn't it get increased armor? When, it's, when it gets set up. Oh, we'll, we'll wait for it to go stationary again and then hopefully I can hover over it and get the tip. My knowledge of American forces though, as you all know, turbo weak, uh, owing to the fact that I probably played less than five games with them. So, okay, oh, there it was. Ah, it only it only actually pops up when he stays still with it. So I'm gonna have to actually catch it. Uh, looks like a PFC committing pretty hard into the West here. The MG, the Volksgrenadiers, the Panzer II, all there, present and correct. All right. Okay, right, well, I'm just wrong. Somebody with better game knowledge than me is going to have to tell me them, or is going to have to answer Emma Duranke's question, which is super valid. What is that little green icon that pops up on the American flak half-track from time to time? Uh, it is... Hold position? Handbrake? Oh, okay. Really? I literally never use that on any of my vehicles that I think about it, although I guess I never have to micro this particular one. So what's the advantage of doing that then, Aki HQ? You seem to know. Check the abilities, lol. It's right next to D-Crew. Right, but what is it actually? Oh, it stops it from rotating. Ah, I guess that is kind of important when you actually have a vehicle like this, which uh, wants to present certain facings and is utterly disastrous if it presents other facings. Okay, well, there we go. Thanks very much. Cheers, Orange Pest. Good to see you in chat there, buddy. No spoilers, though, please. It's very buggy otherwise. Huh. Yeah, I don't remember it being there. Not in that context, anyway. I remember the handbrake being there, but since I've never used it, that's probably why I've never seen the uh, the green icon pop up. Looks like we've got an AT gun adding into the roster here for Orange Pest. That's going to help against this Panzer II if it can, uh, if it can find the little light tank. Uh, American forces just still dominating the field, though. Fuel and uh, VP going to fall back into American hands here. And PFC just having to commit seemingly all his might just to try and hold this location. We don't even actually have this fuel. Oh god, Rifleman even going to push forwards here. The Panzer II doing its best, but finally, that, that was around from an M1 AT gun. Here it is. Uh, the M1 AT gun going to start doing its work. Volksgrenadiers get on, to, get on top of the AT gun, but their STGs aren't actually finished yet, so the AT gun will definitely slip away here. Flak half-track in position to cover as well. Um, and things just looking really good for the American player, uh, kind of as you might expect. I mean, we are used to seeing American forces dominate early on, but against OKW, you know, not not this hard. Um, and uh, yeah, have we got flamethrower on that? No, we don't even have a flamethrower on the rear esh as well. So, uh, rifle company not doing any any particularly obvious work. I don't think I've even seen any mines get put down. Actually, Orange Best is actually stacking a lot of muni too. So. Uh, definitely has options there. Um, let's just quickly check. So, uh, yeah, there we go. Weapon racks is coming. There we go. So that'll be a good outlet for all that munition spending there. Okay, so there, there, there are mines on the bottom left muni point. Very nice. Okay, cool. And sprint, of course, which, yeah, okay. Sprint, sprint's good. I just haven't actually seen it or like been aware of seeing it but then again, my eyes are like darting all over the screen so I probably have missed it. I'm sure Orange Pest is using it. Um... Okay, it looks like finally, if I crack the tack, we can see PFC has actually kind of pushed up enough, uh, grabbed a couple of the VPs, gets off the clock for the first time in a long time. Gonna grab one of these fuel points as well, so I'm liking what I'm seeing. Looks like the Schwerver Max Schlepper creeping into position to establish the Schwerpanzer HQ out here. 
So, I mean, as the OKW player, like, the safe places to put this truck is usually, like, here or around about here, so that it either covers the doorstep of your base or this flank. Uh, only very rarely do we see it placed elsewhere. So, yeah, this will be fine. Gets it down without being scouted as well by Orange Pest, so that is incredibly likely to deploy um, safely. Uh, do we have Major Tech coming here? Major Tech is indeed on the way for Orange Pest. It looks like these boys are going to be moving on into the mid-game here momentarily. Look at the sp- <laughs> Good point, Emadaraki. Ah, uh, look at the speed on that SWS track. Yeah, that's right. We're going to see the, um, the secret tech, the SWS crush. That's actually going to be the secret tech enabled by this bulletin. If you pin your opponent with MG34 and then come in with the SWS truck, you can get that sweet crush. Do you guys remember when the game actually released? When Kuba Wagons had suppress and SWS trucks um, could destroy heavy terrain? Like, legit, it was a build where you would just you would just suppress your opponent's infantry with Kuba Wagons and then go for the crush with the SWS truck? And like, they had to nerf the SWS truck by take, getting rid of its crush abilities because honestly, and then later on they had to nerf the Kuba Wagon because th that, that, that was just too good. It was honestly too good. They, they, they legit had to nerf two units because that was the thing people were doing sometimes. God, that was hilarious days. Yeah, A game. Yeah, he remembers the trucks getting nerf nerfed. There you go, buddy. So weird, man. So weird. I I like what they tried to do with OKW. I really do. But just some of the things that they tried to make different about OKW just really, really didn't work. Uh, I like having differences between the factions. I really do. But there are certain things that all the factions also need to have in common. And uh, the things that OKW were doing with their stupid trucks at that time in the game was uh, it was too much. So it looks like PFC here is in a pretty precarious position. We're down at 288. Orange Pest is still piling on the pressure. Now, we don't have a commander pick yet. Um, looks like the Panzer II is actually going to get the better end of the flak half-track here. Opting to come in, I don't see any mines in the intervening terrain here. So, okay, looks like the flak half-track will survive for now. Uh, we know as observers, actually, he could have come with that Panzer II like this and probably gotten the flak half-track there, but obviously you want to play things safe as a player. You never know if there's an M1 AT gun or mines or a rifleman squad lurking to uh, try and tag you with the anti-vehicle grenade. Fighting going on across a large front right now. Volks Grenadiers penetrating through in the in the um, east of the map. Uh, looks like, what is this? This is the major artillery barrage coming down to displace Axis units. I think there was a Kettenwerfer in middle building. Panzer II is going to be kiting and harrying this American advance, but it looks like Orange Pest is going to be able to get American boots onto central VP here. So pretty intense fighting going on, but the pressure is definitely on the Axis player here. PFC at 288 is going to be obliged to take some pretty horrible engagements in the late game, so we're probably going to see the good old tried and tested Axis game plan of take a battering at the hands of US and then stabilize behind some kind of fuel investment. Oh god, these Storm Pioneers look like they might have been forgotten about. The fallback path is going to be incredibly hazardous, taking them right next to the Flak half track and through the Captain with BAR. They are basically going to be one-hittable. They still have a pixel to give. Okay, now I think they're one-hittable. Yep. Ooh. Okay, he actually gets the Storm Pioneers out of there. That's kind of big because you do not want to be having to replace Storm Pioneers right now. Um, Obersoldaten going to be getting mixed in. That makes a lot of sense. Of course, Obersoldaten are now more affordable than ever before. And as soon as you have that Schwer Panzer HQ, it does make sense to start calling them in. Let's just check. Yep, Schwer Panzer authorization is done. So we could see a fuel spending unit once the, uh, once the fuel is there for PFC. But I feel like, um, as I was saying, PFC has to do the old stabilize and then beat... beat USF in the late game, so every VP is going to be crucial here. Uh, we don't have any Tiger, we don't have the Grand Offensive Doctrine, but obviously the Tiger 2 is a prospect if we uh, if we complete the tech tree. Not sure, I mean obviously we're a ways away from that right now. Uh, we could have a Storm Tiger, this is a decent map for it. Um, Elite Armored Doctrine is Dece. Sorry, excuse me while I uh, sip on my tea. Um, <clears throat> LMG34 finishes up on the Oversold Art, and I feel like now PFC is kind of turning the corner, right? With this with this Schwer Panzer HQ, like, anchoring control over a portion of the relevant map area that the, the, that the players are fighting over, with Oversold Art coming up, with Veterancy finishing and STGs on all of the Volks, 
still with the MG34, which is kind of going to be the linchpin of this Axis defensive line now in mid. Uh, and the Panzer II going on to achieve three stars of veterancy and looking really good. Now I feel like these armies are actually pretty evenly matched, whereas the American player has basically been out-muscling the, the Axis forces for like the first 15 minutes of the game. Now I feel like uh, PFC is going to be in a decent place. Now, Mage Tech is done, but I actually think we're going to be seeing Panzer IV or whatever it is that PFC wants to be getting more or less the same time as the Sherman or whatever Orange Pest wants to be getting comes out. Um, and three squads riflemen with weapons, with decent officer support, the Flak half track still alive, that's all great, but it's going to be quite hard to engage into this army now. We've got two Kettenwerfers and the machine gun with great supporting infantry and that Panzer II still. So I actually think Orange Pest is um, in danger of uh, sort of becoming the underdog as this game goes on. Uh, so it is going to be a Sherman. Oh, no, it gets cancelled. Well, let's see. Was that a regular Sherman? And then we're cancelling it to save for an easy eight, perhaps. Pack Howitzer gets added in. I think this is super smart. Uh, this actually could do really well. Feynmanville is a fantastic map for a pack howitzer because you can kind of just put it somewhere central and it can shoot into most of the relevant areas of the map. Like you can you can camp it around here and it can reach like most of the places where the Volks Grenadiers are going to be trying to cap uh, and, and it protects the VPs. It's also really good for countering the machine gun and the two Kettenwerfers which are pretty much the biggest problem right now for the American player. This machine gun's in a great position and those Kettenwerfers are basically making this flak half track a non-unit. So the pack howitzer can counter them with smoke or barrages, whatever uh, Orange Pest wants to do. And going for a second pack howitzer, I, I like this actually. Uh, rare that I feel like we ever see a double pack howie. Um, but yeah, I actually think this is really smart. Feynmanville, for all the reasons I just said, two pack howitzers is going to be great. Shoe mines here, just going to donk these riflemen. Ugh. Uh, actually, there is no metal detector out here for Orange Pest. Um, that's kind of fine for now, but once we start getting some proper medium tanks, we're probably going to want that metal detector. And uh, yeah, PFC. I mean, except for this American incursion that's breaking through mid, but I feel like PFC can probably close the pocket with these uh, Axis units that are reinforcing and coming back out. The Panzer II can just swing back across into mid. I feel like PFC has actually stabilized really nicely here. Um, and Orange Pest is going to have to change tactics. Now, the first stages of that pivot are definitely here, the two pack howitzers. And I feel like once the Easy 8 arrives, well, then we'll have all the ingredients we need to try and apply the pressure back onto PFC here. Um, so I like what Orange Pest is doing. Four stars on this Panzer II. Christ, it's leveling up fast. What does it even get at four stars? Increases the range? <laughs> oh god, that's so nasty. Um, Panzer IV here will be the first fuel spending unit of choice. I don't know about that. I, 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 it just feels a little bit underwhelming, but I mean, Panzer IVs are very good. Uh, it's going to be useful against all these units, and I don't know. I mean, there's an easy 8 There's only one M1 AT gun, so I... This Panzer IV is absolutely fine. It's absolutely fine. I guess I'm just a fan of a little bit of spice. Panzer IV seems so predictable and, you know, absolutely fine. I mean, I say that and I do mean that it's absolutely fine, but it's also like a little bit underwhelming. I always like to have a little bit of spice, a little bit of something something noteworthy, something exciting. A Panzer IV is not those things, but I mean, obviously, if you're a player playing the game and not a caster watching the game, then you want the dependable choice. The Panzer IV is that. I, all I, <laughs> Emma Duranke after the SWS crushes. Bro, we all want to see the SWS crushes, my friend. That's <laughs> That that would make the game. I feel like we're past that stage in the game now. Panzer IV coming forward. Love the camo, by the way, that uh, PFC is rocking with. Nice stuff. All right. Okay, w, uh, over Soldaten being forced back. A lot of Americans on the dance floor here. But you can see from the minimap, Orange Pest is trying... is. is fighting a difficult battle right now, almost pinned back to the doorstep of the American base. PFC relentlessly applying pressure. Kettenworth is creeping forwards. The Easy 8, uh, actually probably not as good as a regular Sherman against infantry, and the 50 cal upgrade actually not done. The munition's not there for that, so not the best DPS against uh, infantry squads just now. I suppose we have the flat half track for that. Three stars of veterancy. Nice. Look at these pack howitzers. Just plying the... Uh, doing so much damage. Plying their deadly trade. I think in a way as well, actually. Pack Howitzer's, like, the actual graphic for the explosions. Like, look at that. It looks super underwhelming. It looks about the same as, like, a GR-34 or, like, a regular mortar round. But the actual damage and, like, the radius of the damage is more impressive than those units. Um, so I think, to a certain extent, the Pack Howitzer's are sold a little bit short by the graphics of their explosions. They are way more dangerous than those graphics actually sort of indicate. Um, so, yeah... What's up, Coercer? Good to see you in chat there, buddy. Welcome welcome back. 
You've never actually played or watched Company of Heroes 2? Well, welcome to the party, friend. This is one of the most chaotic, ridiculous RTSs out there. Uh, it is just super beloved because it's absolutely epic, in spite of a multitude of ridiculous flaws that have plagued it throughout its history. It's still one of the best RTSs out there. You could do a lot worse than hanging out, having some fun, enjoying the Company of Heroes 2, my friend. It's just a hell of a game. For all its flaws, and it does have a great many, which I go on about at length, Company of Heroes 2, I just still keep finding myself... It just does something that no other RTS does. I don't know what it is. It's, um... I should probably think about that and actually... I think that's actually probably an interesting discussion to have. But, yeah, it's just an incredible game. It really is. I am so hyped about just the idea of Company of Heroes 3. Like, I, goodness knows Relic are making it because they haven't been doing anything else for ages. And as far as I know, last time I checked, Sega and Relic, they both still like money, right? So, Company of Heroes 3 will be coming. Company of Heroes 1 and 2, of course, record-selling RTS games who won numerous awards. So, I mean, they will make Company of Heroes 3. Again, they still like money. Um, so, anyway, looks like uh, PFC taking some pretty handy fights here. Uh, Orange Pest has grabbed the Eastern Fuel and VP, but PFC pushing forward with the five-star Panzer II. Holy spoons. That is quite scary. Uh, and this defensive position, the Panzer II is kind of threatening in here. Uh, the M1AT gun... I feel like we need a second M1, to be honest. This one M1 is actually not really cutting the mustard. It's not really providing the coverage that we need. Somehow, this Panzer IV is not really under the duress, and the Panzer II is totally still finding angles to engage. Kettenwerf is taking a lot of damage. They're going to have to GTFO. Now we get to see Easy 8 which is awkwardly leading with the rear armor there. Needs to turn that one around, but Easy 8 versus Panzer IV is going to be a fight that we see as American infantry desperately pushing onto mid, but there's just too many Volks and the lawnmower Panzer II still scything down the American infantry. Excuse, me, excuse my mouse as it has yet another little malfunction there. Uh, so, okay, yeah, now the Panzer IV are going to be kiting against this German infantry. The Easy 8 would love to be able to take some shots into that. It's going to come forwards perhaps to do so. The 50 cal as well is finally finished on the Easy 8. We crack the tack after that last phase of fighting. We can see the Orange Pest has actually succeeded in claiming this area of the map. Uh, the Schwerpanzer HQ is still holding tight in the west. But um, for now, the Axis forces have actually been pushed back. The pack howitzers can now come forward. The flak, um, the flak half track, once repaired, is going to be really annoying for covering the central VP. So Orange passed in a reasonable position. 333 tickets under 270. Sorry, over 270 though. Uh, definitely tells us that this last phase of play has been Axis dominated. That scoreline, as we come up to the 26 minute mark in a second, uh, has been shifting. Uh, and the uh, the early game, the early game work that Orange Pest has done has basically been uh, equaled by the Axis player. Axis forces here. Is this a push too far? Now now the M1AT gun is in a good position and the flak half track is just gunning down these units. Uh, a rifleman squad flustered will fall back in intact. The, the pack howitzers firing but there are Axis units getting too close. Whoa, the flak half track goes down. Was that a Kettenworth around from mid? I think that that was a Kettenworth around from mid. I didn't actually see exactly what tracked onto that one. Uh, the M1 AT gun gets taken out as well, actually, so uh, Orange Pest suffering a couple of unit losses there. One of the Volks Grenadier squads has gone down as well. Good god, I'm such a good caster. I catch no unit deaths. I'm so good at this. Huh. Um, but yeah, the MG34 holds strong, and I mean, I often say, in games that are grindy and go on for a while and, and revolve around the victory points, uh, machine guns are key. Having machine guns overwatching the victory points is key. Oh, the major is going to solo sneak down the east. Uh, sorry, down the western flank and grab this VP. That's massive. Nice work. The Panzer II will be tasked to come over there and deal with him, but he has achieved a decap, so that is value. That's really nice. Um, but as I was saying, in these grindy, grindy games where it becomes about victory point control, Jag Panzer. We'll talk about that in a second. Uh, machine guns overwatching on the victory points are uh, usually what decides whether players win or not. Um, although it might not look that way in the fighting. If you just persistently have a machine gun overwatching certainly the center VP, but as many others as possible, you usually go on to win that game. Uh, so, okay, we've got a Jagdpanzer. Been a minute since we've seen a Jagdpanzer, it feels like, actually. Um, and I usually really like a tank hunter. But I feel a little apprehensive about this one. Um, so... 
There's a Sherman Easy 8, that's a fantastic target for this Jagdpanzer. It's definitely not going to be a bad Jagdpanzer, but I feel like we actually kind of have the Sherman covered between the Panzer IV and the two Raketenwerfers and the Fausts on the Volks. I feel like we actually have an acceptable plan for this Sherman. Uh, so then, that leaves the door open to saving up for a Panther, and I kind of think a Panther is a little bit nicer as a hard AT vehicle, especially on this map. Um... This map is actually quite short and very wide, which means that the lack of turret on the Jagdpanzer is relatively easy to exploit. And, I mean, Panthers are just more durable, aren't they? Panthers are just easier to keep alive. They're, they're the better unit in a vacuum. Panthers do more. That's why they're more expensive. So, I feel like this was a reasonable opportunity to save for a Panther, especially as we actually basically had the fuel for Panther anyway. So, anyway, the Jagdpanzer is out. Um, lovely camo. These, I love and loving this green camo that uh, PFC is rolling with. And it's going to be answered by a Jackson. And like, Jagdpanzer Jackson is a fight that can go either way. And there are other tanks in here which are going to be taking shots and contributing damage. But yeah, this is a really interesting late game medium armor clash that we're about to have here. And it's going to come down to the positioning on the AT guns. And basically the kingmakers here are going to be the Jagdpanzer and the uh, and the, um, and the the Jackson. And how, how their shots and how their... Um, uh, how, they, how their positioning comes down in the fight. That's what it's going to come down to here. So we're going to see if we're going to have one big medium armor clash or if there's going to be sort of skirmishing over an extended period of time here. Um... Sorry, I'm just reading, reading through chat here. Panthers do seem a lot rarer these days. Uh... Maybe because of the command panther nerf, but also I just think that um, Panthers, like, anti-infantry DPS... Um, because Panzer IV's anti-infantry DPS has been like slightly buffed over the years, uh, and certainly in the last patch as well, Panzer IV's also got that target size buff. So like the diff, like Panzer IV's have increased in value, while while Panthers have stayed more or less stationary. And like especially against USF, I suppose, you know, you really want to have a little bit more anti-infantry. And since USF don't really have access to any like heavily armored units, the you don't feel like you really need the Panther. But I mean, if we're building a Jag Panzer anyway. That's why I sort of like, I'm like, well, why don't we go for Panther? Because we're building a, a dedicated AT unit anyway. But, I mean, the Jagdpanzer does have a higher rate of fire. It does get much better veterancy for, for specifically dealing with tanks. Going to be rolling a miss there. Captain Werfer in a lovely position. Panzer II going to come forward. And both players, they're lining up here. Looks like we've got the Jackson here is going to be anchoring the south end of the American line. Whoa, the Jackson going to be rolling way in. What are we doing? There's a Kettenwerfer here, not to mention the Panzer IV and the other Kettenwerfer, which could creep forwards. Oh, God, the Jackson getting woefully shot up. Oh, God, he's going to stop in front of the Pan in, in front of the Kettenwerfer arc. Ah, and now the Sherman Easy 8, like, kind of interfering with the pathing on that unit. Brave Rifleman will displace that Raketenwerfer, and the Jackson will escape. But uh, taking a couple of shots there made me a little uneasy for a second, but Orange Pest is going to get away with it, and that's just fine. Um... And I think the longer this game goes on, assuming that these two armies are equal, which they essentially are, I think the longer this goes on, the more it favours Orange Pest. Because Orange Pest has these two pack howitzers, which are just taking a toll. The longer this goes on, the better investment those pack howitzers have been. And there's no, there's nothing in this uh, Axis army that can actually reach out and touch these these um, pack howitzers. So as long as Orange Pest doesn't actually like fall asleep and like remembers to move them back. Okay, having said that, right, now it's a Stuck as a Foos, right. That's the appropriate counter to the pack, how it says. Wow, PFC is just almost like in real time hearing my comments, which is impossible because this game was played a while ago. But still, um, yeah, the Stuck as a Foos is going to be a nice compliment to this roster and that really can reach out and punish these pack, how it says. So this makes like tons of sense. And to be honest, actually, it's starting to make sense that we went for the Jagdpanzer over the Panther now, because the Jagdpanzer is less unit cap, which leaves you more unit cap free to go for additional tech choices like the uh, like, like the Stukas of Foos. So, okay. This thing's starting to make a lot of sense now. 20 billion viewers. Sorry, 20 billions viewers. Wow, even more crazy. But, um... Yes, indeed. Yeah, look at us go. Straight up to 20 viewers. Um, even though I was an hour late today because of, like, work stuff, and even though, um... This is like, what? What are we technically in now? My second week of streaming? No, it's my third week. There we go. Yeah. We're just straight up to 20 viewers. Because you guys are all awesome. And everybody likes casting Company of Heroes too. So, yeah. No, seriously. Much love and support. And thank you very much to everyone for showing up. It's just epic. I Honestly, I just thought I would probably never get to a stage where I was having like these numbers of viewers on the regs. Like, it's just insane to me, to be honest. Like... 
all the way back when I started streaming on Twitch, which was two weeks ago. Um, I've, 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 I've said this before, but I'll say it again in case there are people watching who weren't there when I said it before. I, I tuned into this guy who was streaming some Company of Heroes 2, and he had like 20 or 30 viewers, and... Uh, and he was just like, yeah, I've been streaming for three years, and it's really cool that we built the stream up to this. And I was just like, yeah, man, that's really dope. God damn, I, you know, if I could stream to 20 or 30 viewers, I would be so happy. Like, God, that's something to work towards. And then, like, by the end of that week, we were getting, like, 15 to 20 viewers, like, regularly. And, like, it's, that just seems to have just kind of been the standard. And it's, like, it's fucking epic. It's, it's like, I just can't believe it. Anyway. Anyway, enough, enough going on about that. I don't want to get too, like too emotional and weepy about all this stuff like thanks for supporting me guys but like it is just fucking epic it really is helping me get through this lockdown anyway anyway these two players have been continually going at it the american player once again has the chokehold on the vps it's pfc who's bleeding out at 203 and ticking we've got another sherman easy eight on the queue this is a ridiculously epic game can we just say as the captain and the major have died in combat this is a ridiculous and serve some Volks Grenadiers. This is a ridiculously epic game. Look at how many units these players are microing. Look at how many decisions these guys are making every few seconds. Like in the period of five seconds, they're probably making like 20 important decisions. Like this is a difficult composition from both players to stay on top of. There are so many moving parts, so many plates spinning, so many things that your opponent can do that if you don't react to, you just kind of hard die on the spot. So like, this is kind of insane. Um, uh, didn't I have 20 plus viewers all the way back when I cast Artifact Cups? Yeah, absolutely. But I'm kind of putting that to one side as an exception, because that was like an organized tournament event that I was casting. So I kind of expect people to be interested in that. Whereas this is just me casting random games on a Monday. Like, you know, it's kind of a little bit different. And like, to be honest, like way, way back when I first started the channel, you know, we were streaming some really high level Company of Heroes tournaments and we got like 500 viewers or a thousand viewers. The episode saw that, no! PFC there, just losing attention. It looks like, you know, with 35 minutes in, fatigue is a very real thing when you're doing something as high intensity as playing Company of Heroes. And look, this Axis roster is turbo depleted. Is he actually away? It just looks like he's just not responding. Oh yeah, no, PFC has to GG. <gasps> no. Oh, what an ignoble end to an otherwise epic game. I feel like literally PFC had to leave the computer there because PFC just stopped giving commands to his units. Like, oh man. What an end to an otherwise great game. That is a great shame. That is a great shame. But there we have it. A lovely win here for Orange Pest, who, to be fair, was winning in the final moments of the game. So it's not like the player who had the upper hand had to leave. Um, I love the I love the use of the easy eights. I love I love that we weren't just leaning on easy eights. I love that we had a Jackson in there as well. I think having that three dimensionality, especially with Fury American anti tank resources, is really crucial. So I really like where Orange Pest navigated the end game uh, com um, composition to. I think the pack howitzers were essential and made life so hard for the Axis player. And here's the thing, right? If the pack howitzers are getting loads of value and then they force your opponent to get a stuck as a first, well, that's kind of a win, right? Because you're like forcing your opponent to have to buy this unit, which is actually, you know, a really good target. Like this is quite easy to kill. Uh, so I think the pack howitzers were really cool. Um, and yeah, a really nice game there from both players. So we're going to hop back to the live game lobby and see what we can find. Um... Oh, that was a crash. Oh no, it was a crash. Oh, that was, okay, so that was a crash there. Oh, uh, that's a shame. Okay, cool. Well, let's see what we got going on. We've got uh, PFC, who I believe is um, Asia Mint, uh, and P? Who? Who is P? That is an unknown player. Can we get some more info here? Uh, how do you, how do you do the, how do you do the view steam profile? Why is it not coming up? What, what, do, what do I have to press to get this guy's steam profile? Oh, nope. Oh, we had it for a second there. Hmm. Okay, well, I've forgotten how to get people's Steam profiles. Either that or it's just not working. I'm sure it just it used to just be like right-click. Okay, well, we've got this game. So it's a PFC, who I think is Asia Mint and P. We've got the Angry Dutchman and Hoi Jimmy 890 on Langraskaya. That's going to be Vermact against Americans. 
And we've got uh, some unknown players. So it looks like the choices are really... Hang on now, we've got Pineapple the Fruit Dude, who's pretty reasonable, and Bruce. Uh, we've got CC Art and Dushalo. But I think it's really between these two games. So we've got first still PFC, uh, who I think is Asian Mint, and P. So um, I guess press 1 in chat if you want this game. Uh, press 2, or type 2, for Angry Dutchman and Hoi Jimmy on Langriskaya. I kind of am leaning with that second game. Um, Langriskaya just kind of makes for good games. I'm, I'm feeling the Langriskaya pick right now. Um, but yeah, so one more time, those of you in chat who want to have a say in which game we're going to cast next, uh, hit 1 for first PFC uh, and P. Hit 2 for Angry Dutchman and Hoi Jimmy. Let's see what we get here. Oh, quite quite a lot of people actually interested in seeing uh, Asia Mint play again, actually. Fahu! What's going on, buddy? Oh, you have to click on the name! That's why it wasn't working, because P is so short. Cheers, Fahu. Nice work. This profile is private, and they are just called P. Alright, well that didn't tell us a whole lot more. Oh well. Okay. Oh, it's close. It's close. We've got three votes for the Colodney Farm game, two votes for the Langrisky game with Angry Dutchman. I'll give you guys like ten or fifteen more seconds while I finish this cup of tea, and then we'll, uh, and then we'll go for it. The Steam profile name is PFC from P. Yeah. Huh. Well, I'm just really bad at these things. I, I, I don't, I don't, I don't get it. But there we go. <laughs> oh, look at the URL. Oh, okay. Oh, you look at the URL. Sick. All right, Fahu. Thanks for the tech, buddy. These are things that I really should know as a caster, but I'm just so bad at this. Mm-hmm. Well, we're gonna jump into the Colodney Farm game because that is the one. That is the one that has gotten the most votes. Oh no, it's no longer observable. That one must have ended instantly then, because there was like a three minute timer on that one. All right, well, let's refresh. See what we get. So we've got the Langrisky game. Yep, we're casting the Langrisky game. Sorry guys, I guess PFC crashed again and just quit or something because that game must have lasted literally only like five minutes. Um, <laughs> All right, so uh, we're going to have another fine opportunity here to examine the play of... Um, scratch that, we're doing the Langrisky game. Keep up, Magpie. Jesus Christ. Honestly... You take two days off, Saturday, Sunday, and then you come back to casting and you've forgotten how to bloody do it. All right. <clears throat> Sporting in the South here, playing as the Vermacht pieces, going straight ahead and picking the defensive doctrine and making use of the Ostropan build or an Ostropan build. It is going to be Zevers, the Angry Dutchman. And a Sporning in the North, playing as the American forces. It's going to be Hoy's Jimmy 890. Uh, who's also going to go ahead and pick the mechanized, what's it? Mechanized company. That's the one. Um, so basically two of the most transformational doctrines available for their respective factions. Uh, the defensive doctrine, of course, gives you access to Ostropan. Really does let you play a techless style, and we are actually seeing a techless style here. So Vermac players out there, grab your notepads, because, you know, this is the kind of stuff that's just useful to have in, in, the, in your back pocket. Just bringing out a different way of approaching Vermac. So, yeah, we've got MG42, we've got Ostropan. Uh, later on in the game, of course, we have the uh, Stug E, which is super good, generally speaking, but is even more better -er on this map. Um... Because Langriskaya is quite small, because Langriskaya is all about controlling this middle area, because Langriskaya always becomes very grindy and bogged down, having a cheap, affordable assault gun, which is mobile and relatively difficult to kill, um, is a massive asset. And it's also quite it's so cheap at 75 fuel and 260 manpower that it vets up incredibly quickly. And once that thing gets to three stars, where it gets the rate of fire increase, the sheer amount of damage it does just actually makes it quite difficult to capture a victory point that is under that is covered by its gun. Your infantry will be exploding so fast, you will have to fall them back long before they are able to capture the point, usually. So, yeah, this is a great map for Stuggies. Loving what I'm seeing. 
Of course, from the American side of things, well, the American, the uh, mechanized company gives you access to this fine unit that we're already seeing on the on the field, the WC-51 military truck, which uh, is something new for American forces. They don't have a Kuba wagon or a Bren carrier or anything like that. They actually have to build an officer and then they have to research light vehicle tech and then they have to bring out, you know, a utility car or a steward or whatever it is. So having the WC-51 at this early timing is actually really nice. American infantry is already fantastically great, and it's a lot better when your opponent's infantry can't really shoot back because they're being shoved around by a truck. So the WC-51 can do that to begin with. Um, then when it gets the 50 cal upgrade, it actually is a great source of DPS even just by itself. And it's also got a ton of other abilities here. It can call in an artillery barrage once you have the uh, battalion command post, that's major tech. Um, uh, ooh. And uh, what else do we get down here? Uh... Okay, all right, that does appear to be it, essentially. I feel like I'm missing some stuff that this thing can do. I mean, you can load units into it and like have them do drive-bys and stuff like that, but it's not so great for American forces um, because they don't really get flamethrowers. Um, so um, it's just like, okay. Um, so yeah, we've got two squads of Ostrapin, one MG42, which is gonna be, of course, the linchpin of the Vermac defensive line. Uh, we've got Panzer Grenadiers going to be getting added into the roster as well for Angry Dutchman. So this is Panzer Grenadiers after two squads of Ostrapen and the MG42. Oftentimes we see players go for the three squads of Ostrapen than the MG42. If I'm going to be honest, in my heart of hearts, I think I do prefer going for the three squads of Ostrapen because Ostrapen, in my mind, are a unit that you, you really get the most out of how cheap they are and how many rifles they bring when you bring out another squad of them. And it's really annoying for American players when they start losing fights against Ostrapen with their riflemen, because every shot from your Ostrapen that hits the rifleman is worth so much more than shots from the rifleman that hit the Ostrapen in terms of damage dealt, relative value of the damage, and the veterancy gained. And to be losing fights against Ostrapen is just so annoying. So um, that's just me. That's just my feeling. Panzer Grenadiers are also great, though. You know, the STGs diversify your damage output, and um, they give you a much more powerful tool uh but they are much more fragile so you know it's like there's upsides and downsides and angry dutchman here judging that the um the panzer grenadiers are the correct choice to bring in as the third core infantry squad here um ostrapen are cheat <laughs> uh don't you know if you append kaya to a word you make it russian uh that is absolutely correct kaya um yes <laughs> the company of heroes 2 russian translation also, A-game, I've got to say, I assume that you're a non-native uh, English speaker for someone who's, like, your, your native language is Russian, right? But your grasp of English is, like, damn good, man. You always pick up on my stupid little word plays and, like, things like that. Nice work, better. -er. Um, uh, Bartolf, welcome to chat there, friend. New to the game. Well, um, yeah, I mean, uh, I'm Ostropin. Ostropin basically are something that Vermacht don't usually get. They cost 200, which is very cheap. Um, and they have six six men or six models in the squad. Um, so they can take a lot of fire and they cost very little. And Vermacht as a faction are pretty much balanced and set up around not having a conscript-like unit. And Ostropin are kind of similar to conscripts without upgrades. Um, so they are actually a very strong unit for, um, for, for, for Vermac to have. If you combo Ostropen with MG42s and the relatively elite Panzer Grenadiers, you actually have an incredibly competent and quite scary infantry core to an army, which you can use um, in a variety of ways. You can attack with it, you can defend with it, you can modify it with vehicles and weapon teams to your heart's content. Um, it also, crucially, lets you skip some tech. You don't have to build infantry company, although I always recommend that you do build like the mechanized company because trying to play the game without pack guns, which we now see on the queue, is very, very dangerous for Vermacht. It's very dangerous. We often see Vermacht players who try to skip pack guns get punished, and often that punish is enough to cost them the game. So you can try and play without pack guns, and if you succeed, the upsides are massive. You can get a very fast Panzer IV. Uh, but it's so dangerous, I wouldn't recommend it to anyone. I think the correct thing to do is skip Infantry Company if you want to skip some tech, but do build the Life the Mechanized Company because pack guns are just one of the greatest strengths of the Vermac faction, and if you decline to use them, you will you will often just die to a light tank. So, that's my thoughts. Um, 
Uh, Aki HQ saying that the Ostrapen don't scale to the late game. That's true. Their veterancy upgrades are not as good, and they don't get the sort of access to the range of upgrades that other core infantry get, especially conscripts, who are their nearest analog. But they do scale quite well in the late game. I mean, their veterancy upgrades are useful. Let's take a quick look. We get uh, the field first aid, like all Vermax units. We get uh, a little bit of a DPS buff, and then at three stars, we get the all-important squad survivability uh, and a little bit more DPS. Now... Um, Oh no, these Ostrapen being hung out to dry. That's a mistake there from Angry Dutchman. That's going to be a squad wiped um, for... Uh, that's an unforced error, essentially. Just the fallback not coming down on those Ostrapen soon enough. Um, that's a bit of a shame there, but uh, at least they were only 200 manpower. And uh, as I was about to say before that happened, because Ostrapen cost so little, they do vet up relatively quickly. So often you will see vet, uh, Ostrapen squads get to the three stars. Um, and you can give them the LMG-42, which, you know, if you really want to give them a bit of DPS, you can find it on them if you want. So I think that they're a really good unit. They don't scale as well as other infantry, but they do still scale nicely. Third language? What are you, what, what, what's your second language, A-game? Hey, no worries, Bartolf. That's, uh, that's what I'm here for. Happy to help with the explanation. So, it looks like the American player has gone ahead and completed the tech tree. Oh, okay, yeah, sure. Yeah, I forgot about that. I thought you were going to, like, throw at me like you're also, like, fluent in German or something. Um, so, yeah, it uh, looks like uh, Jimmy890 going to be completing the tech tree. Goes for the lieutenant uh, and the captain. And uh, will have access to the 50 cal and the M1 AT gun. I honestly quite like it when American players do this. I mean, the jury's out as to whether you want to... Oh, God, is he going to lose the MG42 here? Oh, no. Oh, no. Now, there are Panzer Grenadiers here, but the Stuart can probably push them away, so these riflemen can probably pick up the MG42. Oh, yikes. This is the one thing we didn't want to happen as the Vermax. Oh, Bundle Grenade, though, is going to deny that. So now the MG42 is still up for grabs, though. These Panzer Grenadiers are desperately holding it. But the riflemen are circling in. The Stuart, there's still no answer. The pack gun actually is the answer. Sorry, there is an answer. The pack gun gets set up. That's going to force the Stuart back. But two Panzer Grenadiers remain here. The 222 scout car will come in and try and push back this infantry, crucially breaking the one star rifleman squad. So, no danger of an anti vehicle rifle grenade, or sorry, anti vehicle grenade going to hit this uh, 222. And I believe Dutchman, with vastly inferior resources, is actually going to be able to hold on to this uh, vitally important machine gun. And that's huge. Now, we just need a squad that can grab the machine gun. So, Ostrapen, yeah, Ostrapen are going to come in and grab that machine gun. Nice hold from Dutchman. If we gave the Americans a machine gun at this point in the game, that would be... I don't want to say it's, like, the game completely over, but, I mean, it's very close to that. The fact that I'm considering saying that is, like, tells you something about how significant that is. Um, so, yeah, especially on Langriskaya, giving your opponent an MG42 is just... It's just awful. It's just got awful. You never want that to happen. Um, we should also point out, we do have telemines popping up in some really nice positions like here. Uh, did we see any other telemines? Um, and telemines, of course, are a really good way. If that Stuart or, or the WC-51 crosses those telemines, it will die. So that's pretty good. Um, and there is actually no metal detector for the USF either, so a little bit risky there. Uh, American forces are making an issue of it here in mid. Uh, going to push up onto mid-VP, MG42, of which there are now two on the Vermac roster, doing a great job. Look at the positioning on this. One MG42 covering to the north, the other MG covering the mid here. And it's very difficult for USF to actually engage onto this position. USF at the moment, I would love to see actually probably a mortar squad to get some smoke or even just barrages to start countering these MGs, because these MGs are being problems. And, uh, you know, even the Stuart, which can deal with these, the pack gun has been maneuvering around and getting the shots to keep the Stuart at bay. And even though we lost the squad of Ostrapen, Angry Dutchman building this composition back up to a really healthy size and, um, and composition is really nice. Um, uh, Aki HQ, being multilingual is great. It literally is. It is one of the greatest gifts any human can have. Not, not simply because it lets you communicate to more people, which frankly is one of the most fantastic experiences any human can have as well. Um, but, but also because having another logical architecture within your brain is just actually fantastically liberating for the human mind. Like, you will just be... Oh, there, there are the telemines. He gets the Stuart real nice. But, um, yeah, I mean, if you have access to other languages, your brain just has other logical structures, and that just leads to 
just being able to think in different ways and realize different things and just if your brain is constrained and locked into just how one particular language is is built then like you're doing your brain a disservice and it is because of this that i constantly try to learn languages although to to my to my sort of chagrin i've never been able to master another language to the same extent that i can wield english um but one day fingers crossed i will hope to the trouble is as i'm sure those of you who are students of language know the real way to master a language is to immerse yourself in it so that you're using it every day and i think for me personally anyway that's the only way that is the best and only way for me to learn other languages and it's just been a long time since i was living abroad or, or, or using another language on a daily basis and i miss that bitterly um very much looking forward to a time when i can uh, just like live abroad again to be honest um anyway if we crack the tech, we can see a triple cap has been established by the Axis player. This line built around MG42 is being supported by the pack gun and the 222 is doing really well. Uh, and uh, Ostropon are making advances, actually, even into the American side of the map. Uh, getting Axis boots onto this fuel point out here in East is going to be massive. Pack Howitzer, actually, is going to be the choice here for Jimmy 890 instead of the mortar that I alluded to earlier. And yeah, this makes sense. The pack howitzer is absolutely fine on this map. Um, it's a little bit more expensive, but it um, delivers more damage, and that's fine. So yeah, I like that. This MG42 does get swamped. Uh, a lot of Americans here. Weapon racks are finished, so the BARs are popping up. The DPS are a lot more fierce on these units. Actually, a really concerted American push coming through. With the MG42s off the line, this is the time for the American player to push. So uh, I like what I'm seeing. Uh, these riflemen in this building could just pop out and grab that. I mean, I know either. I, I know we see this because we've got no fog of war, but there's an opportunity there. I would love to see Jimmy grab it. Yeah, they're going to pop out and grab this. Real nice, real nice. So the American player definitely tightening the noose. This has been a really even game, even in terms of the scoreline, even in terms of the composition, really just those Ostropen being lost so far. I mean, and the Stuart, I suppose, yeah. Um, but yeah, a really nice close affair here between these two players, and it looks like we're going to develop into a really balanced mid-game, and then we're going to see whether uh, either of these two players gains the upper hand when there's more units and more sophistication and vehicles to be microing. Uh, yeah, Aki HQ, I would say that that is essentially correct. Um, once you learn the sort of basic rules of a language, after that, it's kind of just a matter of learning the building blocks of the language in terms of expanding your vocabulary and becoming more com com uh, confident with uh, conventions and things in the language, yeah. Uh, the lieutenant's going to get rebuilt. Wow, it's actually quite rare, I feel, that we see a an officer get rebuilt for American forces, but that's going to be the case here. Okay. What's the lieutenant's ability? I forget. Is it sprint? I can't remember. We'll have a check once the lieutenant comes out. But major tech is finished here for uh, Jimmy. Wow, gets the uh, gets the MG42 there. That was a pack howitzer shell. Really nice. Going to complete the kill on the MG42. So already that pack howitzer delivering. Panzer Grenadiers just scraping out of combat here. Oh god, they're taking a lot of DACA, but they should be able to get out just fine. Uh, let's see, 90 fuel floating right now for the American player. So we'll see what the fuel spending, the, the uh, major tech unit of choice is going to be as this game goes on. The Angry Dutchman is taking quite a beating here, actually. Look at the top left, look at the top right. I feel like the American composition, now with weapon racks and the pack howitzer uh, and an M1AT gun, um, is beginning to outmuscle what um, what the Angry Dutchman has. Ostropin are great, but we only have two of them, and everything else in this army is very fragile. Um, so I'm a bit worried that there's going to be a, a moment in a second where Angry Dutchman just suddenly starts hemorrhaging units. And we're kind of already seeing that with the MG42 going down. A couple of near misses on Panzer Grenadiers and Ostropon. This is getting a bit bit too close here. A bit squeaky for uh, Angry Dutchman. Let's quickly check the tech. Battle Phase 2 is complete. And I would actually quite love to see a Stug E come out. He has the fuel. He has the manpower. It would be all his fuel, though. Here, yep, it's going to be a Stug E. So, all right. This is going to be really good until a Sherman arrives. And then we're going to need a second pack gun. So, okay, if he, if he follows this up with another pack gun, I think we're okay. But... I feel like our manpower is being pulled in a few different directions at once here because whilst we want another pack gun, we kind of also need more Ostropon. Um, we just need some more ablative frontline geezers here. So, <clears throat> yeah. Um, oh, wow, some interesting discussion coming up in chat about learning languages. That's pretty cool. 
Ah, uh, yeah. What's up, Feeding McFriends? Good to see you. Yeah, it's quite funny how... Just depending on how you use a language, like a game commenting that he like finds English much easier to type than to do other things with, and you know that's probably because you do the majority of your English interactions online, where typing is the way it's being done. And um, yeah, certainly with um, with various languages that I've learned over the years, like there are some that I'm much more confident like speaking or being conversational with. But then if you you know writing and reading is much more challenging for various reasons because just yeah for various reasons anyway the stuggy is here I'm gonna start doing some damage onto these riflemen I'm gonna start making life hell for the american player but i mean this m1 at gun actually has the stug in arc for now so he needs to back that one up i hope he sees the a i hope he sees the at gun okay he's gonna need to start backing the stug away the back howitzer kind of countering the uh, mgs now as well i mean we've already seen it get a kill on one of the mgs and I just feel like this American composition is just a little bit harder, a little faster, a little meaner. And I don't really know what Angry Dutchman can do. I mean, we're, we're flatlining on manpower. We don't really have the fuel that we would want to sort of think about a support armor core choice. In fact, we don't even have a support armor core. So even though Battle Phaser 2 is done, there is no support armor core. He did get the second pack gun, which I was hoping for. So at least we have a decent anti-tank spine to this Wehrmacht army. Which is going to be helpful because there's a Jackson on the queue. Wow. Okay, I think Angry Dutchman getting a bit of a lucky break here. If this Jackson doesn't get cancelled, this is great for Angry Dutchman. Because, like, the Jackson... Okay, it's really good against vehicles. But, like, Angry Dutchman doesn't really have any good or expensive vehicles. And won't have any for quite some time. So, like, this Jackson is kind of actually the least impactful fuel spending choice right now that Jimmy 890 could have gotten. Now, it's probably going to survive and go on to vet up and make future Wehrmacht armoured choices uh, really difficult to use and get a lot of value later on. But just for right now, uh, this Jackson actually doesn't really do very much. I mean, it makes the Stug E hard to use. It will probably kill the 222. But those are relatively cheap units. And to be honest, it's the core infantry that's doing the majority of the heavy lifting right now for the Angry Dutchman. So if this was a Sherman that could come in with high explosive shells and start punching holes in the Wehrmacht line and like overrunning machine guns and like looking for kills on the pack guns, then yeah, that would be really scary. But a Jackson is like, well, this is an insurance policy, which I actually feel like Jimmy 890 doesn't need right now. Um, could have gotten a Sherman first and then gone for the Jackson. Of course... You know, we know, we doubt a fog of war, we can see Angry Dutchman's uh, state of resources. We know that the fuel just isn't really there and the tech resources and the, the structures aren't there for uh, Angry Dutchman to actually be building any targets really for this Jackson. But, you know, it's much harder for Jimmy 890 to get a sense for that and so sometimes you do just want to build the Jackson for, for safety. So I feel like that's where we're at. The Jackson gets scouted and you have to feel like Angry Dutchman breathes something of a sigh of relief that the American fuel has been sent that way instead of towards a Sherman or something. And, you know, Angry Dutchman is still fighting hard, not losing any units, but you can see on the minimap the American noose is slowly tightening. Uh, the pack howitzer continues to thunder away, more or less unanswered. I wonder if a GR-34 would be an appropriate choice. Oh no, we don't have infantry company, do we? Of course, yeah, one of the disadvantages, of course, of skipping tech. Um, okay, a second Stuggy. I don't know about that. I really don't know about that. Because you know your opponent has a Jackson, and like the Jackson just is really good at like bopping your Stuggies and keeping them back. Uh, so we'll see how this Stuggy does. Th this can go one of two ways. It can either consistently find value by lurking just out of range of the Jackson and just like flumping enemy infantry squads that try and get onto these points, or it's just going to be a lovely light snack for the Jackson. And just every time it's trying to take shots, the Jackson's going to whack it and make it fall back and have to repair and possibly kill it. Um, my concern is that we're not we're not getting much fuel here as Vermax, are we? Um, and I'm, I don't know that we can win the game with Stuggies. I feel like we might have to tech at some point. And so any time that we're diverting our very limited fuel away from teching and towards more Stuggies, I, I do worry a bit for the Angry Dutchman. But we'll see. Um, for now, it's not looking terrible because the Stuggies are able to fire from this sheltered position. Uh, and cover the central VP. So perhaps this is going to be okay. Yeah, see, this is what I mean. The Jackson just comes forward and just does so much damage. Oh my god, even the pack howitzer getting a lovely hit onto that Stug E. The Jackson using attack ground here, just going to keep flumping away. 
Oh, that's actually really interesting. Um, is, it, is it not the Easy 8, though? It's the Sherman 76 that this commander gets. But yeah, I take your point. He could have gone for a Sherman 76, which actually would have been a really nice middle ground between a Jackson and a regular Sherman. So yeah, pr appreciate your point there. Um, uh, who was it who said that in chat? Aki HQ. Yeah, really good point there. El Mago Pie is definitely still alive, man. Hey, Luciano! God damn, man, it's been a while. How you doing, friend? Good to see you in chat. God, I remember when we, me and you used to play 2v2 on the ladder. Dude, we should do that again sometime. I'm going to be so rusty. But, uh, okay. Um, how are these Panzer Grenadiers, like, pushing all these units back to the base? Nice work. Uh, so let's crack the tack here and take stock of the situation. This is kind of a weird composition that the Vermac players found themselves with here. Double Stug E, double Pack Gun, double MG is really nice. Actually, did we lose an MG? No, we're still on double MG. Yeah, all the ingredients are here, but there's no fuel income and there's no teching plan. So this, for now, it feels like this is about as good as it gets for the foreseeable future for the Vermac player. And that is worrying, because the American player is adding Sherman 76s. So, okay, the Sherman 76 comes out. I think we all know it would have been better to get that before the Jackson and get the Jackson after, but whatever. He played it safe, that's fine. Players have to make these decisions because they don't have perfect information like we do. And that's that's totally fine. Um, so here comes the 76, and with the 76 on the roster, like, if anything happens to these pack guns, life is really bad for the American player, uh, sorry, for the Vermac player. Like, and bad things can happen to these pack guns. We've, we've got a pack howitzer that's looking for them. This American infantry is all horrendous. If it ever finds a window to run through and get onto the pack guns, that's great. That's that's great for the American player. And if we lose either of these pack guns, then that Sherman 76 can overrun, kill the other, make a mockery of these weapon teams, bully all these units around, kill all of the vehicles. Like, so these these pack these pack guns are basically all that stands between between the Sherman 76 and like complete domination at the moment. So. That's a worrying dynamic to be in. Having said that, though, I mean, the pack guns do have MGs and good infantry and the barrages of the Stug E's to defend them. And the victory point situation somehow is favouring the German player. Okay, the Sherman 76 finds a nice angle on this Stug E. The Jackson going to chip in for more damage, but it will sneak away. You know what, actually? I think, I think Angry Dutchman is obliged to buy another squad of Pioneers next um, because we just need the repair time, don't we? We've got a lot of vehicles that is going to need repairing. A lot of incoming tank shells going to be hitting these um, vehicle resources for Angry Dutchman. So I feel like the second Pioneer squad is going to be really worthwhile. Also, Langriskyra is a map that's always going to come down to victory point control. Um, so having just another really cheap to reinforce squad of Pioneers that can push onto squads if needs be in a pinch. Uh, with a metal detector as well, that would be a really good thing to get. Um, yeah, that would be really nice. I would like to see that. No more hat. Indeed, mate. Yeah, no, no more hat. In fact, look at this, man. Look at this. See these lockdown locks? Look at the state of this. Let your locks down for lockdown. Yeah, man. Um, no hat at the moment. I mean, the hat is still a big part of the magpie life, but it's quite hot here, actually. This uh, this British summer that we're in at the moment has been the hottest since records began, and it is sweltering. Uh, even today, which is a cooler day, it would be uncomfortable to wear a hat. So, yeah, no hat indeed. But, um... Uh, where have I been? Good question, man. Um, I guess I just haven't been doing so much casting uh, until the start of this year when I started casting a bit more and then lockdown, you know, the whole coronavirus pandemic kicked around and so I've had a lot more time. So now I'm doing casting as a way of sort of staying sane and just having something to do in lockdown. Um, so uh, yeah, but in the meantime, yeah, I try, I've been doing some new stuff with work basically. It's been taking up the majority of my time and whoa, Panzer Grenadiers getting hung out to dry. They will go down. Rifleman getting a kill on those Panzer Grenadiers. That's massive. And things, are they falling apart now? Is the fragility of this Vermac list about to be punished? We've got a, uh, what is this? Sector artillery coming down. So that may buy some time here. That is actually affecting, crucially, this middle sector, which, as you can see on the minimap, that is affecting, or if I crack the tech, you can see that. That is actually providing quite a shield here for the Axis player. Just to buy some time, get the line back in order, hopefully repair some of these vehicles. But I wonder if this, uh, this list is too fragile. Um... Yeah, I was doing some new stuff to a certain extent, um, Luciano. I'm still doing some new stuff with uh, with work. I've taken on a lot more responsibility, and there's just more for me to be doing there. Um, so I've, I've been doing stuff like that, and just I don't know, just focusing on other things in my life, I guess. Uh, but casting is very much back on the agenda recently. 
Datton says, Ostropin get 28.5% re reduced received accuracy at Vet 3. Yeah. Okay, so they do become fantastically survivable. That is my impression of the unit. Once they get Vet 3, they are, like, really survivable. Um, although Aki HQ pointing out that, yeah, I mean, all infantry gets a survivability increase with veterancy, and in the later stages of the game... Oh, God! The, the Zooks on the rear rush actually being really good here. There's no MG covering these infantry. They will get the kill on the Stuggy. No way to prevent that... Uh, those Zooks from going off. Now the Jackson's going to have a little poke forward. Wants to find the Stuggy. Panzerwerfer? Oh, I didn't realise the heavy, pan heavy Panzer Corps had gone down. Panzerwerfer? I don't know. I don't... I don't think I like the Panzerwerfer. I'm just not sure it's high impact enough. Because our infantry's taken a beating. Our vehicles are on their last legs. I feel like we had the fuel. We could have gone for a Brumbar. And I feel like a Brumbar really does help because it, it is armoured. It has a big enough HP pool and it has enough armour that it can actually weather a few hits and be just fine. Get it, Go for a Brumbar. Get a second squad of Pioneers. And you can camp the Brumbar here and lob shells over things. And the, the shells are horribly devastating. It synergizes with your Stuggies. I think I like Brumbar better than this Panzerwerfer. But I'm open to being wrong. Panzerwerfers do help. I just feel like we don't actually have enough going on. And the Panzerwerfer only fires once every like 100 seconds or so. So it's like, I don't think it's actually just going to be enough. Uh, that's my feeling. <clears throat> okay, so uh, Hoi Jimmy 890 in the ascendancy here. Uh, although still trailing in the scoreline, so actually Angry Dutchman does have some time to work with here. Desperate last stands of Germans going on all over the map. The Panzerwerfer is here. I wonder if he's going to use it. There is a bit of a concentration. If you put it here, you might get some American units on the fallback. 222 would love to. Ah, oh, come on, Mouse. The 222 would love to come in and start chipping in on these infantry. Here comes the Panzerwerfer barrage. Oh, but Jimmy890 on it. You feel the, sc the scatter. He knew exactly where that was going down. The American unit spreads beautifully, mitigating that barrage entirely. And now that the Panzerwerfer's all-important first barrage, the one where it has the most element of surprise, has essentially achieved nothing, is Angry Dutchman actually in a position to take this game? I mean, we're hanging on by the skin of our teeth here. If you take off the two pack guns because they don't help at all against infantry and they're not really a combat unit, like you can't push onto points with them, this is a very small infantry roster to deal with all this American might. Um, so, and now the Americans established the triple cap and are actually pushing into areas of the map which at the 30 minute mark in this game you really wouldn't want them there as the uh, Axis player. So, this is... Uh, it's going to be really tough. Now, we still have this Stug E, but it's a little bit flustered here. It's taking Zook shots. He's going to kite back for now. Two stars of veterancy is nice. We'd love to get that to three, but... Oh, no. We've got a Scott motor carriage on the, on the roster for the American player. Just going to be casting shots into these fragile uh, Vermax squads. We're down to just one Ostropin squad now as well, so... You know, ever the weakness of Vermax is the fragility of their core infantry and their weapon teams. You know, being four infantrymen strong means that you are disproportionately weak to AoE indirect fire attacks. And we've now got the pack howitzer and the Scott punishing. You know, the pack the pack guns are weak to this, the MG42s are weak to this. So that's a lot of units that are very weak to what Hoi Jimmy 890 is up to. So this is tough. Only a miracle will save the Ostia player right now. I completely agree, Sigli. That is that is a rough... This this is rough. This is rough. And they, I mean, they're going to start bleeding out super quick here. Uh, I believe that's a, a major barrage going to come down here, just looking for value. Doesn't find any, but that's fine. You know, we're, we're floating a ton of munitions. The major barrage is actually surprisingly affordable as well. Um, and, um, you know, I mentioned before on the channel, and actually some people in chat seem to uh, have not heard of this um, thing, but, uh, of course, with the Americans, particularly on Langrisskaya, what you can do is, once you hold the middle VP, you can put your Major all the way back over here. Uh, you can put him as far back as here, because this is the same sector as the VP, if you look on the minimap there. Like, you can just see that bit there. And you can put him into lockdown territory mode, and then the Axis player just can't capture this unless they can also displace the Major from here. And that's very, very, very annoying. 
Um, so, you know, there are things that, there are things, that I'm, I'm not saying that Jimmy 890 even needs to do that because we're just winning on the field, but, oh, okay, oh, oh, Panzerwerfer finds a lovely barrage, splashing in for a lot of damage, but not game-changing damage, forces a couple of squads back, but no actual squad wipes, and um, actually no real damage on the um, Scott motor carriage that was splashed by that barrage either, so, um, that will, that will not change the outcome of this game, so the Panzerwerfer continues to underwhelm in my opinion, and I feel like, why didn't we buy the Brumbar? That's what I want to know. Why didn't we buy the Brumbar instead of that? Did we just not have the manpower? How much more expensive is I mean, because I know the Brumbar is a lot of manpower, but... So the Brumbar is 420 manpower. That is actually not... That is like 60 more manpower. I thought it was a lot more manpower. It's not. Okay, yeah, so this should have been a Brumbar game. I mean, I reckon so. I mean, am I wrong? Somebody tell me. Um... Yeah, Datton, yeah, we need some squad wipes to turn this round, absolutely. And, you know, there's there's a captain on the chopping block here, MG42 at close range. Even with the Panzergrens, though, it's not enough. He's going to sneak away. And, I mean, you know, American infantry, they have five models. They're, quite, they're very survivable. It's all three-star vets, so all the survivability is there. Um, Angry Dutchman, though, if we can save up a bit here, we can still go for Brumbar. And I feel like even with the Jackson, the Brumbar is not that bad of a choice because the Brumbar is great because it has a lot, it has decent armor and it has a high HP pool. So you can take a few hits from AT guns and a Jackson and shrug it off. And you can, the Brumbar can fire indirectly over terrain like this. So you can just lurk the Brumbar back here where the Jackson is going to have a hard time getting to it. And you can just cover this VP and this VP just with like heavy, heavy flumping. And you know, if there's a unit which can get squad wipes, I know the Panzerwerfer is okay, but it only gets one chance at a squad wipe every 100 seconds or so. And that's a... Okay, he gets the pack howitzer, but that one can just be recruited quite rapidly. So that's actually one of the most expendable units that can be wiped there for the American player. But still nice to find some value with the Panzerwerfer, I grant you. But um, yeah, the Panzerwerfer only gets a chance to wipe squads every 100 seconds or so. The Brumbar is firing fatty shells every, every few seconds, so... If, if squad wipes are what the German player needs in this game... Whoa, he gets, gets the um, gets the Scott. The pack gun's actually pushing up way far. The, the major barrage comes down in a punishing location, but somehow uh, somehow the Volksgrenadiers and the MG42 survive. The pack guns are going to exfiltrate successfully as well, so a lovely poke there. Oh, he loses the Panzergrenadiers, though. Just when I thought he managed to get out with everything intact, having picked off a Scott. It turns into a trade for some Panzergrenadiers. And to be honest... That's the kind of trade the American player can afford. The fuel income has been so good uh, that, you know, you will probably trade a Scott for your opponent's core infantry uh, when you're in this situation for the American player. And, you know, Jimmy 890 can replace that Scott. Like, pretty much no worries. I mean, going to need to save manpower for a couple of minutes to do so, but, like, that's fine. Um, so, anyway. Um... And the scoreline becoming an issue here for the Angry Dutchman, who, to be fair, this is a skillful last, like, this, well, no, I don't know about last stand, but this is a skillful stand. Angry Dutchman is making this as hard as possible for the American player with inferior resources and inferior income is putting on a damn good display of Wehrmacht stubbornness here. And that is always the first stage, you know, your remote, you know, angry, uh, sorry, Jimmy 890 can overcommit or make a mistake or there can be some unlucky squad wipes, you know, putting together a stubborn defense may feel hopeless, but you never know what opportunities you're going to get. And the longer this game goes on, I feel like the better it will get for the angry Dutchman um, if it can go on like a lot longer. So holding out for time here, playing for time, being as annoying as possible. We got the Stuggy to three stars, although it's taking a lot of Zook hits now. It needs to kite back, but... The Stuggy at three stars fires so unbelievably quickly, it's like inhuman. There is no way a human crew could reload that gun and fire it this fast, I feel, unless they were actually on meth. Which, to be honest, usually the German Wehrmacht were. Um, so, that's going to be helping them. Maybe that's how they're reloading that gun so fast. Nothing like a little bit of crystal meth to up your military efficiency. What did they call it? Pripatine or pris... Pripatine or... No. Prisipol? There was like a mass-produced methamphetamine which they gave to all of the Vermax soldiers in World War II. Pripatol? I can't remember its name. Pervitin! Datton with the knowledge. Thanks, mate. Yeah. Pervitin. Is that how it's spelled? Uh, y Yandre Timo as well coming in with the correct answer. Pervitin it is. Yeah. 
that is how they were able to make up 100 miles in a day or whatever, you know, when they were rampaging through France and everything. In the early stages of the Blitzkrieg, when, Ge when the German military actually was one, uh, one stage ahead in terms of correct military thinking and the units that they had access to, and actually when the German military still had decent commanders who had some, some, some nuance of military control. Of course, later on, Hitler um, decimated his, uh, his military leadership because he was convinced that they were incompetent. Um, oh, God! Okay, Panzerwerfer Barrage here. Did he get the vehicle crew? Wow, he gets the vehicle crew off the Jackson. That's quite nice. It is going to be a Brumba! Okay, amazingly enough, if I crack the tax, somehow here, that was the miracle we needed. So he wipes out the, the, the veterancy on, on the pack howitzer. That's important, but that is a replaceable loss for the American player. The vehicle crew on the Jackson is really annoying to lose. That is actually heartily annoying. That Panzerwerfer barrage changed a lot. It also bought enough time for the uh, Axis player to come out, grab a triple cap, and now the Brumbar is here. And now we've got Brumbar with Panzerwerfer at two stars, which is the most important star veterancy because that increases the rate of fire. So if we can rebuild the core infantry, just start calling an Ostrapen, Angry Dutchman. Just start calling an Ostrapen. If we can get to three squads of Ostrapen, I think we can probably win from here. That's actually amazing, given all that's happened so far. Big turning point in this game here. Uh, big turning point indeed. Okay, here comes the Brumbar. Oosh! Immediately takes off half, two-thirds of the health of this uh, major squad there. Bounces a couple of Shrek rounds. All right, now the Jackson's a problem, but the Pack Guns... Where are the Pack Guns? Okay, they're going to lumber into position to help cover this Brumbar. If this Brumbar can start leveling up, let's take a look at the veterancy abilities, since we only so rarely get to do so. Hey, Rifleman, I heard you like a flump. Oosh! That was like a miss, and it took off half the squad of that... Half the health of that squad. Okay, oh, but he loses, he gets hit by the anti-vehicle rifle grenade, and he, there is a Jackson here. The, the AT guns are here to cover. A Brumbar with a broken engine is uh, slow, to say the least. But um, So the veterancy abilities, right. At Vet 1, you get the bunker-busting barrage. At Vet 2, you get the armoured skirts and improved rate of fire. So Vet 2, absolutely pivotal then. Vet 3 includes rate of fire and mobility. So Vets 2 and 3 are huge. Um... You know what, actually, forget what I was saying about Ostrovan. Buy Pioneers. We could go up to three squads of Pioneers. This also starts looking just great. Also, somebody in chat earlier... No, actually, it was on the YouTube channel. Um, was saying that um, Pioneers had the damage on their MP40s, like, dramatically increased. Panzerwerfer Barrage. Finding some good hits. Uh, finding an okay hit. But, um, yeah, somebody was saying that the um, uh, Pioneers had their MP40 damage dramatically increased, which which is why we're seeing them, like, kick ass more often. So, yeah, okay, yeah, he is buying more Pioneers. Okay, I like it here. Angry Dutchman, making all the right choices, as far as I'm concerned, has survived long enough to get to a point where, you know, this is prickly. Stug E, Panzerwerfer, Brumbar, that is a lot of indiscriminate death for your American forces to have to dodge. Um... And we killed the vehicle crew, which took the veterancy off the Jackson. Uh, oh, God. And this is what I mean. Now, now we're trying to crawl into the double MG42, which is still roaring away for this Vermac roster, with so much indiscriminate explosive support. That, that is actually quite difficult, especially on a map and in a game dynamic, which is going to be all about victory point control. Having the machine gun and the, and the, and the assault gun units is, is really good there. So, okay. I, I I, am open to seeing this recovery being made by Angry Dutchman in a game which I think we all felt, chat included, you know, people were saying this is basically unretrievable, but definitely I think Angry Dutchman is alive in this game. Behind, for sure. Look at the scoreline. Look at the composition. The American player has so much stuff and so many resources, you know, but this is winnable now, for sure. You can see how the Angry Dutchman can take this game now. It all comes down to how these next engagements start looking. Oh my god! If he can actually get some squad wipes off of this Brumbar, then, because the American player doesn't have the manpower to replace core infantry and spend fuel. It's one or the other. So if we can force them to replace core infantry, they will not spend fuel. Oh god! With the Stuggy and the Brumbar. Look, see? As soon as he gets onto the VPs, he has to fall back. We can use the Panzerwerfer to break the other squads as well. So... We have a lot of ability here to deny the American forces um, productive time on victory points, on capturing victory points. So, okay. 
All right, but the American forces are starting to overrun here. Sector artillery being used at a crucial moment, though. We'll see if this actually manages to score any damage. Sector artillery is falling down here. And, okay, the double cap... Whoa, no, Ostropon actually managed to grab east. I didn't see these guys. Okay, so 92 tickets and holding. I thought the Angry Dutchman was going to be back under the clock there. And some core infantry has been lost here. Oh, it's the rear esh because they're having to man the Jackson. So, yeah, by killing the vehicle crew, we have actually forced the rear esh to kind of step up and be a vehicle crew. So that is kind of a squad wipe for the American player, like in terms of a core infantry wipe. And now we're back up to two squads of infantry, uh, of Ostropon, so I'm loving these choices from Angry Dutchman. These are the right moves to be making. 167 tickets, this game getting closer here. This is actually a really great hold. Yeah, A-game A -game just is not in love with his American composition. Neither am I. Where is the answer for the for the, for the the Panzerwerfer? Where is the answer for the Brumbar? One Jackson will not do. Uh, and we, we, we can't really spend our fuel and replace these things. We, we have enough core infantry where we can actually spend our fuel on the next choice. So so that's probably fine. Good God. The amount of attrition going on over these middle VPs is horrendous. But this is where a Vet 3 Stug E is just brutal. Can ply its trade. Uh-oh. Panzer Grenadiers. Okay, they do sneak away. Ugh, the MG42 goes down, though. So that's a bitter loss. First star of veteran sheet achieved on the Brumbar. But the Jackson hammering that one away. The Brumbar... I, I feel like the Brumbar wants to take up this position, actually, and let the Stug E, which is the more mobile unit, kind of chill out around here, where it wants to be, like, advancing and, and falling back. Um, I feel like that would be the better way around to do it, but I just... I don't know. Are there any telemines about the place? God knows. Probably. Uh, I will check, but there's so much action going in on, I don't want to miss. The Brumbar here getting hit down to half health just for trying to cross, transfer across the line here. Oh no! Oh no, with the engine broken, the Major is going to sprint in. Zook's ready. He's looking for the Brumbar, saving the shots here. Gets slapped by the Stuggy. Panzerwerfer gets used at very close range. That pack gun. How did the pack gun take no damage? And that's it. He, he wipes some American Corps infantry. The Brumbar still stands. The, America, the Major did not find that. So this is looking okay. Ostropon will probably cap mid here. What a game. 43 minutes and a Brumbar game. At last we cast a Brumbar game where the Brumbar is able to survive for a while and feels like a relevant unit in the game, which I, I've been wanting to cast one of these on the channel for a long time. and It's just not arrived. Honestly, I really do think Vermac players kind of forget about the Brumbar and it's in a place in the meta now where it feels just fine. Like, it's pretty good, if anything. Jimmy should start massing Shermans. Agree. But the trouble is, we don't really have the manpower for that. The Stug E at last goes down, gets picked off by the M1 AT gun there. No, that was a lovely shot. Really gnarly. And now the Brumbar is on the chopping block. No line of sight, though. The Brumbar's engine is still broken. We can't be moving forwards. We can't be moving forwards. Ah! Oh, I'm so worried about this Brumbar. Oh, God. I understand that we want to preserve the victory point here, mate, but we can't lose the Brumbar, and that, that, it, it, that the engine is still broken on it, so we cannot be moving it forwards because it's so slow to move it back again. All right, Panzer Grenadiers heroically get onto this point. Remember, of course, when the uh, heavy Panzer HQ is done for the um, Vermac forces, they do capture things 25% faster, and that is, being, that is being material in this game. That is being value. All right, Brumbar slowly turning itself around, halfway on its way to Vet 2, which is all-important survivability upgrade. Um, Anti-Morale, thinking that he shouldn't be build, rebuilding Lieutenant. Um, yeah. I agree. Whoa, we've actually got, um, we've actually got cavalry riflemen coming in. Really? What is the thinking behind them? I don't understand the advantage. Are they cheaper? No, I don't understand. Uh, that is some high level shizzle that's above my head, clearly. I don't understand why we're bringing in cavalry riflemen now. And look at the fuel stacking here. I don't think Jimmy 890, uh, realistically, I don't think Jimmy 890 is ever going to be able to spend that fuel because the attrition rate on the infantry is so high. Uh, and I think, to be honest, Angry Dutchman, time to start bringing in more Stuggies, bro. Just keep bringing them in because they are doing good. They were doing good. Picks off the three-star AT gun. Lovely work here. That, that Kettenwerfer as well. Three stars of veterancy now. 28 kills. How often do we see three-star vet on a Panzerwerfer? Not often, I'll tell you. So, 
That's really nice. The AT gun gets recruited, but I mean, losing three stars of veterancy is massive when your target is a Brumbar. Uh, of course, the other thing that um, Jimmy890 could try and buy here is um, the mortar half tracks. Now, I know we don't have the manpower, but I'm talking about, you know, if over the last 15 minutes we'd been adding a couple of mortar half tracks, is that a good thing? Because they can put down smoke, that beats the MGs. Uh, he's going for second Broomba! Play Star Wars Death March. Dun, 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 dun. Wow. Double Broomba. Oh my god. Yikes. Oh, he gets the Jackson! What was that Jackson doing coming in so deep? Oh man, I feel like that was an unforced error. I mean, the pack guns will eat that one up, and now we're going up to double Brumbar. Angry Dutchman, are you for real? Is this for real? He gets the Lieutenant! Oh my god, I think Jimmy890 might be dying. Oh. This is such brutal combat, but the German forces are winning the day. They are holding the victory points they need to hold. They are blowing up the Yanks they need to blow up. <laughs> the plan is working. Make the Americans explode. The plan is working. Angry Dutchman unleashes his anger. Absolutely, man. Oh, the Ostropan, though. He does lose some Ostropan. But you know what? I mean, we can afford Ostropan. 200 manpower. I feel like he could actually afford to lose those Ostropan. I, I would like to see them replaced, though. It is... Oh, God. The MG42 with three stars of vet. Okay, actually, the Brumbar is just going to... That's Brumbar 2. Brumbar's Vi gonna come in here and shove back the American infantry. Double Brumbar, mate. Double Brumbar. The Doppelbar. We're getting the hell beat out of us. We, we are. We are getting the hell beat out of us. That is what is occurring. That is what will happen if you let your opponent get the double Brumbar. With a Panzerwerfer. This is so much indiscriminate annihilation that he can just lay down. Where, where, where is that landing? Oh, God. He goes for the value shot. <gasps> oh, 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 God. He gets the AT gun crew again, and he gets a lot of damage. And we don't have the manpower. And Jimmy890 taps out. It's too much Brumbar for him. What? What a sick game. What a sick game. Oh. Hell yeah. That's, that's game. All right, well... I'm really glad we caught a Brumbar game on the channel because I've had this feeling like the Brumbar is good enough that you can just build it in the late game and it it's it's a solid game plan now for Vermax. Like it's it's if you look after it, it provides exactly what Vermax want and need in in a lot of game situations. It's not appropriate all the time. It suffers on the larger maps. But a lot of the maps are small like this and if you're just doing Vermax things, usually the Brumbar fits into you, your list really nicely because it just puts so much pressure on your opponent's roster. If they're spending all their manpower reinforcing infantry squads that, that are suffering model losses due to the indiscriminate damage and death raining in on them from Brumbars and stuff, like, you know, it's really good. And I think this game has also demonstrated to me that Brumbars synergize really nicely with the Stug E. If you can get out that Stug E, which starts the game plan of bleeding out your opponent's infantry and going for spontaneous squad loss at squad wipes, you can start that game plan a lot earlier and then and then flesh it out with the Brumbar later on. And like the Stug E is fantastic, man. When it, it, it vets up quick and when it does get to vet three, it's a brute. Um, and all, I mean, yeah, I know we saw the Stug E in this game did die, but I mean, good God, it was decent on the way. Um, and it paved the way for us to get to double Brumbar. How much unit cap is a Brumbar? What? Can I can I check now? Yeah. 14. That is such a reasonable unit, mate. Look at the look how much it costs. 150. 420 manpower. 14 unit cap. Right? Like, that is actually not that much more than a Panzer IV. It really isn't. Um and it just I know that the two units are very different. One's a medium tank, one's an assault gun. There's a lot of differences between them, but I'm just saying, Panzer IVs, allied players can deal with them all day. Like, Panzer IVs are good units, don't get me wrong, but everybody knows how to deal with a Panzer IV. The survivability rate and the destruction ability of a Panzer IV are much lower than the survival rate and the destruction ability of a Brumbar. And I know the Brumbar, you need to tech a bit more, but 
it's not like it's not like that tech is just a cost anymore you 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 actually get a lot of benefit by building the heavy panzer core these days i don't know i, I sort of feel like vermite players should be skipping support armor core more often and just going for brumbar panther or like brumbar panzerwerfer or you know anyway sorry i'm just rambling i'm just thinking out loud here but uh, a fantastic game, a sick game there from the Angry Dutchman. What a pleasure to have caught and cast that one. That was dope. All right. It's, uh, it's half past two in the afternoon here. I think I'm going to cast one more, and then unfortunately I have to get back to work. Uh, but let's have a look and see in the live game lobby. Let's, uh, let's take a look at what we can get our teeth into. I'll probably also take a quick break here. My tea is dry, so we do want to refill that one. Hey, Magpie, did I end up getting in some CNC? Yes, Daten, I did. Uh, and uh, I learned that I am very bad at it. I've forgotten how fast that game moves, man. Um, and I'll be honest with you, I can see it being a problem because of the sheer amount of clicking involved in it. Uh, I can see it being a problem with my RSI, but I will be playing some, once I've had a bit of practice, I've got some friends who've got it, and uh, we'll go for some 2v2 CNC, and that'll be really good fun. Uh, Aki HQ saying, maybe we can see Magpie play one. Absolutely, I'm up for that. Uh, probably not today. I would like to get in some practice before I play on stream. Um, but I have been getting in some practice steadily in the background and, uh, the day will come when, uh, yeah, I'll play some on channel. So we've got another game with Hoi Jimmy 890 playing as USF this time. Oh, sorry. Actually, yeah. Still playing as USF against the question mark Vermarkt. Let's have a look. This is uncertain who this is. Uh, or we've got Inkaruna. And Soviets on Langraskaya. Oh, this is a really good. This is a really good barcode as well. Uh, sorry, this is a really good kanji. Um, yeah, I've cast this guy a load of times. This is like a decent kanji, so I'm kind of inclined to cast that one. I know it's on Langraskaya again, but it's got Soviets. Um, so, what do we feel like, guys? Somebody chip in. We've also got CCR and Rito Gar. Yeah, that's an Angerville. Yeah, I feel like casting this one. I reckon because we've not had Soviets today. And I, unless I get my daily dose of vitamin Soviets, then I, um, I do suffer. <laughs> so I feel like we're going to cast this one. Yeah, I'm going to jump in and cast this one. <laughs> okay, so what, what we'll do is we'll load this one in. Then I'll take a 10 minute break. Um, just put the kettle on, stretch my legs, uh, give, give my old voice a rest. And, uh, and then we'll jump, then we'll jump into this game. Deiru. Hmm. I'm almost certain I can read like half of this. But I don't want to take a stab. It would be so embarrassing to get it wrong. <laughs> okay. Alrighty then. We're loaded in. So I'll just put a pause on that. Alrighty then, folks. Uh, I'm going to take a 10 minute break. I will be back at, let's see. Um, what's the time now? I'll be back at 50 minutes. 50 minutes past the hour. 5 0 past the hour. So we'll catch you guys then. Thank you very much, everybody, for tuning in. Uh, what, what a great game that last one was. What a, what a smash. Out. Well, uh, hopefully, this next one is going to be as good. It's got Soviets, so the table is set. Um, yeah, catch you all in 10 minutes.
Greetings, or what is up, and a very warm welcome back. The sun is actually hiding, and the magpie is about to be casting. I came with you guys this live lockdown the, what are we on, 8th of June, uh, with the, the tail end of today's midday magpie. Um, what is that with this camera? It keeps, like, shifting back. There we go. Um, uh, is this... Oh yeah, no, I am live. Good, good, good. Um, for those of you who are new to the channel at the moment, my casting schedule is as follows. They're coming at you guys Monday, Wednesday, and Friday, uh, 1100 hours GMT, midday, if you live in the fine and green and pleasant land of England. Uh, so yeah, that's what we're doing. Uh, still very new to Twitch streaming and uh, kind of learning as I go, but it's been hilarious fun so far. And uh, yeah, no, I'm having a really good time with it. Um, now, my follow notifications are still busted because I've still not moved to a different service provider. Uh, but it looks like we have had a follow. So uh, Bartolf, thank you very much for the follow there, friend. Uh, your support means a lot and it's really cool to see uh, to see the channel grow, um, even though I'm so new and frankly bad at all this. But uh, yeah, it's awesome. Thank you very much. Um, now, we've got ourselves another game of Company of Heroes 2 to cast here. Uh, so... Without further ado, let us begin the festivities once again. It's going to be another Langer Sky game, but to be honest, after that last one, I'm okay with that. Uh, spawning the South Plains, the Vermac pieces, using the German infantry doctrine, it is going to be Ingruna. And spawning in the North, playing as the Soviets, it is going to be a Japanese player who we're just going to call Kanji. Um, so, yep. Um, I call the Japanese players, or I, to be honest, I call any, any, any character who's using Chinese characters, I call Kanji because um, I cannot read the kanjis. So <laughs> I, I have this thing where when I'm reading Japanese and I encounter kanjis that I don't know, I just say kanji because that way anyone listening to me usually pipes in and tells me what the, what the kanji is and, uh, and that's really helpful. Um, so, wow, these two, these two players are actually locking in their commanders at a very early juncture. In Karuna is going to be going with the popularized in the meta right now German infantry doctrine now veteran viewers will be aware I am skeptical about whether about about this commander's um, correlation with victory um, which is a difficult opinion to have because clearly objectively this is a strong commander it lets you do several very strong things and it addresses many of the weaknesses that Vermax have and um, to a certain extent, I feel like I, I cannot be right in the face of all these very good players who are consistently keeping this commander on their roster and very often picking him in games. So I think clearly, perhaps um, I'm just seeing on, on the channel, I'm seeing a, a disproportionately bad batch of games for this commander. Perhaps elsewhere or more usually, this commander is totally winning out there. Um, because even if I cast like 20 or 30 games with this commander... That's actually still not a very high sample size. It might sound like a lot, but it was really not a very high sample size. I'm just one guy. I'm just casting the games I cast. But from those games that I've cast, and based on my observations and my understanding of this commander and how it interacts with the meta, I actually think people are putting too much faith in it. I think it's um, very hot right now, but I think once the once everyone everyone's understanding of this commander develops a little, I think we will see it less. Not, I don't think it will fall out of the meta, because it is objectively still just very good. But... Uh, I think we are seeing it overrepresented at the moment, and I think it will tail off. I think it's already tailing off. There was a good couple of weeks where it seemed like literally every game I was casting with Vermax, it was an immediate German infantry doctrine pick. Already we're, you know, we're seeing less of it than then, so. Um, for Kanji here, it'll be the Guard Motor Coordination Tactics uh, Soviet Doctrine, um, which um, is a stalwart commander who um, has been in the game since release and is just very good. Um, does a whole load of things that are very useful to Soviets. Uh, a very safe pick. Um, but with all that said, actually one that I'm still sort of a little bit surprised that we're seeing as often as we are seeing in the meta, simply because um, Guards Infantry, I grant you, will be useful most games. But the other, the other things in this commander, actually, a lot of games, you won't get much use out of. Um, or even if you get use out of them, they won't be the things that you were struggling with the most in the game. Um, so, yeah, I, Soviets have access to a whole load of commanders, and some of them are very transformational and very strong. And I find it hard to believe that out of all the commanders Soviets have, out of all the very powerful and transformational stuff they can do, I find it hard to believe that this guy is coming out in the top three as often as we are seeing players use him. Which is weird to say, because this is one of my most used commanders, and a guy, a really good commander. But... 
if I'm being objective about it, right, the 120 mil mortar is not good. It's not good. It's, it's not good because you already have access to a fine mortar tube with Soviets. And to be honest, the, the inaccuracy of this mortar means that it rarely, if ever, justifies the extra 120 manpower and unit cap that you're paying for it. Like, honestly, most of the time, I would rather have the PM81. So... I don't think I, I, this is fun, and I will always love the 120 mil mortar squad because because nothing puts the fear of God into your German opponents more than having huge blast radiuses dropping down on them. That's a fun thing to do, but on average, is it better than the other mortar? No, and it does cost a lot more. So for those reasons, I don't really like it. Um, vehicle crew repairs are useful but not essential, um, and it's rare that they will turn a game, although they can. Uh, Mark vehicle is incredibly good. Uh, that I will grant you. For the Soviet faction, that's really good. So, guards and Mark vehicle, really good. All of the other things, I think, are situational and sort of optional, and it really depends on the game as to whether or not you'll get any value out of them. The T-3485, it, it's good, you know? That's a good unit. Um, but it does cost more, and it is still relatively fragile. Um, you know, it's just a T-34, which costs more. So it's, you know, it's as fragile as a T-34, essentially. Uh, and to be honest, in games where Soviet players have access to this unit, I think it's probably less than one in three that I actually see them build a T-3485. So, like I say, good commander. All of these abilities are fine, but I would actually say only two of them are excellent. The Guards Infantry and the Mark Vehicle. The others, you can do without. You can definitely play Soviets just fine without these other abilities. So, uh, from that point of view, Guard Motor Coordination Tactics, I would question its, its value. I would question how often we're seeing it in the meta. But clearly players feel comfortable with it. Uh, and in, in the same way that I feel comfortable with it, it's been on my roster for years. I, I love this commander, so, you know, the, I, you know I, I'm, I'm, ha I'm fine with Soviet players using it, and I'm fine with Soviet players picking with it, for all that I've just said. Um, now, let's turn our attention to this game. It looks like we've got pretty standard stuff coming up from our Soviet player. Uh, it was it was a two squad engineer, three squad conscript. Uh, then we had so the uh, we had the support weapon campanile, and now we have this gun coming out. Uh, so, yeah, that's 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 a very early this gun. He must be worried about early two two two. That is a very early this gun from this Soviet player. Hmm. Uh, for the Axis player, we have. Um, uh, triple Grenadier, so this is not a techless build, this is an infantry company build, um, which, we, which, we, which, which we often, if not always, see from German infantry doctrine, because if you're not building Grenadiers, you're not really getting much of the, much of the benefit of the veteran squad leader ability. Um, so yeah, it's going to be Triple Grenadier, MG42 to back them up, that is, a, that is a configuration that we are used to seeing in the opening stages of many a Vermac game. And uh, then we've got a very early pack gun. So, I mean, that makes more sense for Vermax. Uh, if you don't have a pack gun by the seven, seven and a half minute mark, you are open to having bad things happen to you because of a T-70 or a Stewart or whatever. So yeah, this pack gun is the pretty regular safety insurance pack gun to not die that we see Vermax players take. Wow, Soviet player is actually getting a lot done with this relatively techless army. I mean, even with the Zis gun, I think this pretty much counts as a techless army since the Zis gun actually is not achieving anything against this Axis composition, really. So, um, yeah. Uh, oh, Lucia, Lucia 2K5. Thank you very much for the kind words there, friends. Yeah, welcome to the stream. Good to have you in chat. Um, I guess you've been uh, enjoying my wares on YouTube, but uh, welcome to the welcome to the live version. Very nice to very nice to have you aboard. I take a sip on my tea. All right. So both of these players playing quite a respectful early game here. Nobody trying anything super out there. The Soviet player getting the majority of field control, uh, just getting off to a little bit of a scoreline ad score line advantage, opening up, doing about what, 70 odd tickets worth of damage. Uh, hang on, wait, sorry, no, I've got that the wrong way around. The Soviet player is red. Okay, sorry, so it's the Axis player who's actually gotten the scoreline advantage going here. Oh, wow. Okay, that's quite impressive. Um, and we've got Stormtroopers added into the roster now. Uh, so these these camo geezers going to be sneaking about the place with their MP40s looking to uh, get up to no good and cause mischief. Veteran squad upgrades have also started coming down on these Grenadiers, so... Um, to be honest, actually, Langreskaya is probably one of the better maps for the German Infantry Doctrine for a number of reasons, but the one which I'm thinking of now is uh, you start off with a 
almost pocket munitions point, don't you? If you look at the map, for either player, it's relatively easy to keep one munitions point connected, this one here and this one here. Uh, so, especially if you're spawning in the south, it's easy to hold this victory, uh, this uh, munitions point. And German infantry doctrine is a very munitions intensive doctrine. If you do not have the munitions to play this doctrine, you will be punished for picking it. Uh, but already we've got the triple uh, veteran squad upgrade, so that's 180 munitions dumped into these grenadiers, and that's making them five man squads. It's upping their DPS with the G43, so very, very relevant stuff. Uh, the Ziskan actually going to be throwing in some uh, barrage shots there, so finding value even against uh, infantry squads there, or trying to. Um, going to be a T-70 build here from the uh, Tank of the Battalion Command. Uh, so, yep, yeah, the Soviet light tank going to be moving out onto the field here. And uh, basically the game plan for both of these players is proceeding smoothly at this point. Nothing super dramatic. The German player has achieved the German infantry early game composition that they would like to have. The Soviet player is just doing Soviet player stuff at the moment. Um, I would love to see guards infantry probably mixed in next. I think that's got to be the next smart thing to bring in. A slightly more... Oh! The Ziskun Barrage coming down gets the MG42. That will wipe the veterancy off. And that's a, that is a manpower cost that's going to force the pioneers to retreat. So this is inconvenient but not game-ending or game-changing, especially damage. But very nice to find that with the Ziskan Barrage there. That ability is now 35 munitions, for those of you who are wondering. Stjindi is raiding with a party of 28. Yeah! Welcome aboard, everybody. Thank you very much for joining. Thank you very much, Stjindi. That is awesome stuff. Thank you. Um, you're just joining us here. We're about 10 minutes into a game on Langraskaya. Soviets versus Vermax. Guard motor coordination tactics versus German infantry doctrine. Uh, and I was just saying before everybody joined that, uh, yeah, the um, but the game plan for both of these two players is proceeding and developing nicely. Nobody has managed to interfere or throw any massive wrenches into anybody else's works here. We've got a T-70 out with a pack gun to cover it. We've got German uh, squad leader upgrades on all of, the, uh, all of the relevant squads. And indeed, guards are going to be the next choice here for Kanji, which I, which I like a lot. I think guards are the correct choice here, adding in an... Uh, an elite squad with the DPLMGs to up the DPS of this of this Soviet roster. I think uh, after this, I would love to see a Maxim added in as the Soviet player continues to tech. I think that would be a nice a nice choice. There are mines around the middle of the map here, which the Axis player has to be careful of. No metal detector yet for Inkaruna, so that's uh, some slightly dangerous times. Seeking two five six. Oh, cool. <laughs> Welcome to chat, friend. Um, so far, so standard, really, in this game. Pack Gun here going to check the advance of the 270. Looks like the Soviet player kind of committing pretty heavily into the east of the map right now. This Zisk Gun has been being consistently used for the barrages, actually. It's been quite a while since I've seen a Soviet player lean into the Zisk Gun barrage this hard, but it has been finding value. Forces the Pack Gun back here, got the MG42 earlier, so that was pretty nice. And wow, damn, this MG42 ugh, providing so much value. Breaks three Soviet squads here. Provides a window where these uh, these grenadiers can get in rifle grenading range of the Zisk gun. Finds a, a sort of a, a glancing hit there on the Zisk gun. Uh, the T-70 should be able to check any further advance of this uh, Axis infantry. But a nice push there. Inkaruna getting a lot done with the tools that they have. And uh, it's going to be on Kanji here to try and hold a bit more of the field. Or possibly try and like deny some fuel or something. Make a move. It's been a pretty... Pretty middling performance so far. <sighs> wow. Uh, for everybody just joining, um, after this cast is done, I'm going to upload the VODs onto YouTube, as I always do. YouTube.com slash Magpie842. We cast a banger of a game earlier. Vermac versus USF on Langraskaya. Um, what a game it was. It was um, Angry Dutchman. Um, versus Hoy Jimmy 890 and uh, it'll take a couple of hours for the um, for the VOD to get to YouTube but if you like watching good Company of Heroes 2 games you basically owe it to yourself to check that one out that was an absolute banger so uh, yep just just a heads up to all of you who are just raiding on through there's a good game popping up on the YouTube later you just missed it but uh, it was a real just a just a great game just a great game I don't want to I don't want to say anything more about it. I'm not going to offer any spoilers, but that was a real good one. Wow. Okay, Inkaruna getting some stuff done. The Pack 40 finds the T-70. German infantry overrunning. Veteran squad upgrades providing the HP and the pushing power here for this German force to advance. 
Now this has been a German player who has had their resources pretty much undisrupted all game, so we're seeing quite a timely Panzer IV coming out here. This is pretty much like the 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 on plan timing for a Panzer IV, not especially fast, but just on plan. So this Panzer IV is going to be hitting the field in advance of uh, any corresponding Soviet tech, and there is actually only one Zis gun, I suppose, plus the guards with the PTRSs to hold off this for now. So. This Panzer IV is going to be the kingmaker on the field in quite a big way, and I feel like uh, Kanji is uh, under considerable pressure now, already being forced from the field, and things are about to go from bad to worse once this Panzer IV gets here. This German infantry actually has pushed all the way to the Soviet base and still has a, cons a, like, a fair amount of uh, wind in the sails here. We can keep fighting for a while, not too much damage on these German units, so retaking the map is going to be difficult. Wow, the conscripts pushing out in a blob here. Where is the MG42 right now? Actually, the MG42, the one key piece that is missing. So not going to be punished for blobbing up these uh, units right now is Kanji, but this is this is a risky move. All right, here we go. Moisten the Gantz blazing, Molotov's flailing. We're going to come out onto the map, try and get something done, but... I mean, what do we do against the Panzer IV? The Zis gun is actually still reinforcing. We don't have mechanized armor camp and iron yet. Uh, so, uh, we kind of need something, actually. Um, <laughs> Luciano, you don't understand why Langraskaya is still on the map in 2020? Um, I, I don't really know what Company of Heroes 2 would be like without Langraskaya in the pool, to be honest. I appreciate it's a very, it's pretty out there in terms of map design. There's, there's no other map like Langraskaya, but it does make for some good games, I have to say. Imagine playing Langris versus Jove. That is the stuff of nightmares. I decline to imagine. Thanks, though. I've seen it happen to other people, and I have no inclination to want to do that myself. Stindy. Oh, is Stindy, um, is Stindy, um, the Angry Dutchman? Oh, cool. Dude, welcome aboard, man. Yeah, that was a sick game. Thanks very much. Nice to have you in chat there, friend. Well, triple cap then, going to be established by the Vermac player. The Panzer IV, uh, going to take a second to repair here, but that's just fine. We're on double pioneers as well, which I really like. Often we see uh, Soviet and Vermac players go just a little too long for my liking without getting that second engineer squad, and it does make such a difference just to the overall efficiency of your army, so I love going for that now. Uh, and we still have good core infantry. Uh, another MG42 would probably be really nice here for Inkaruna. We do have the money for that. But actually, Inkaruna's fuel income has been so good, we could probably save that manpower for another fuel choice here. Um, let me just quickly check. Uh, so we've got support armor core. Okay, yeah, no sign. No sign of Battle Phase 3. No sign of the uh, Heavy Panzer Corps um, just yet. But man, I mean, I'm open to seeing another Brumbar game. Let's, let's fingers crossed for that. Now the double Zisk gun barrage actually wipes out the pack gun, so that's quite nice. And we're actually going to probably destroy the pack gun. The PTRSs could knock that one off, or it looks like the Zisk gun is actually firing at that. Yeah, he gets the pack gun, so that is that is definitely meaningful material losses for the Vermac player. So signs of life here for Kanji. Now the scoreline situation is pretty dire, given that this is Langraskaya, and it often comes down to a, a real nasty grind for the late game. Also, still no Maxim here. Still no Maxim, still no mechanized armor Campania for, for Kanji. I'm a little confused by that. I would have thought we'd have one or the other by now. Um, but uh, yeah, definitely signs of life here. Taking out that pack gun is really nice. The Soviet army is definitely a decent size right now, but I've, I'm a little bit worried. Where are the engineers? Is there any engineers falling back right now? No. So this seems like risky. Like, why are we not teching? I feel like we've got 210 fuel and we need a way of spending it, right? Because fuel's really good as long as you spend it. So, yeah, we definitely just need to get the mechanized armor camp and don't we? Why is he not doing that? I appreciate, to be honest though, once the mechanized armor camp and finishes, the manpower is there for a choice from that building. So I just feel like we need to see that like right now. Both the engineer squads are falling back right now. So perhaps that was all Kanji was waiting for. I certainly hope so. Uh, and then hopefully we'll see some kind of fuel spending unit. I mean, there's already a Panzer IV out. We have all the fuel in the world. This is, I, I hate building a T-34 into an Axis opponent who is basically ahead of you in tech. Um, even a T-34-85, I feel like we'll, it's relatively easy to counter with just more pack guns or better Axis tech. Actually, a T-34-85, there is a good argument for that actually, because you have killed one of the pack guns and it will 
in it, and it does match up reasonably well, especially with double Zisk gun support against the Panzer IV. So, yeah, I wouldn't hate a T-34-85, actually. But you all know what I'm going to say, or at least veteran viewers will know. SU-85, you know, is really good on Langriskaya. Really, really, really good, because it can just... It's so hard to get to grips with. It's very difficult to exploit its weaknesses. It's very difficult to flank it. And it can just sit back, cherry-pick shots into this Panzer IV, which is the ideal appetizer for an SU-85 to start vetting up on. And, you know, if you ever get an SU-85 to vet 2, vet 3 on this map, that is difficult, to, that is hard mode for the Axis player then. So, uh, yeah, I wouldn't hate to see an SU-85 first here out of the uh, mechanized armor camp now, which is now finished. So hopefully we're going to see a choice from that one taken here. This Panzer IV still marauding around the countryside. Still the Kingmaker on the field here as Soviet forces attempting to break mid here. This gun barrage is being used so extensively, and I really like it, actually. I just... In the early stages of Company Imperials 2, we used to see the Ziskan Barrage all the time, because a lot of things were different back then. And then it kind of got nerfed and things changed, and... Panzerwerfer? Well, it's Panzerwerfer first again out of the uh, Schwer Pan or the Heavy Panzer Corps tech for the Axis player. T-3485 going to be the pick for Kanji. Huh. Axis players are really valuing these Panzerwerfers on Langerskaya, aren't they? So it's 85 manpower, 360... Sorry, 360 manpower, 85 fuel... Uh, so that is considerably fuel cheaper than the Brumbar, but we had the manpower and the fuel to just go for a Brumbar instead. Like, right now we do. We could cancel that and go for a Brumbar now. And I feel like on Langriskaya, well, your opponent has double pack gun, and you really do want to counter those. Sorry, your opponent has double this gun, and you really do want to counter those, so I do understand this Panzerwerfer. I just feel like Vermac players are often just kind of forgetting that the Brumbar is so cheap, affordable, and amazing these days. Listen, I, I thought I was like a raving madman when it came to the Brumbar. I thought I was just like recommending Brumbars and thinking they're really good and just like genuinely being wrong. Um, and then for my sins, I was watching um, Helping Hands. And, you know, say what you will, you know, you can have whatever opinion you like of Helping Hands. I, 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 I like him. I think he rocks. And he definitely knows this game. If nothing else, he really does know Company of Heroes 2. And... He was saying that, yeah, Brumbars are amazing and that Vermac players are underusing them and that you can really build your late game composition around a Brumbar and that's very good these days. And I was like, yes, you know, it was nice to feel somebody else who actually has much better game knowledge than me agreeing with my views on Brumbars. He was also saying that he feels like they're really underbuilt in the meta these days. Um, so, yeah, I feel like I'm not too far off the mark with that appraisal. I feel like definitely we could see more Brumbars. This T-3485 actually coming around, getting the better arc on this... Uh, uh, on this MG. The Panzer IV is here. Uh, gonna miss the opening shot on the T-3485. Has to play it cautiously now, does in Karuna. Doesn't want to take a fight that he can't finish against this T-3485. And the double this gun in mid is nice. This is the great, this is a great position. If we can get a Maxim gun here, then life is great for the Soviet player. If we can get a Maxim gun like here, covering mid, then life is great for the Soviet player. I feel like actually that is the one thing missing. If we have a machine gun, which helps counter one of our opponent's greatest strengths, because this is a Vermac player who's put a lot of extra money into these Grenadiers. If we can make those Grenadiers less efficient through a Maxim gun, I would love to see that. Especially because victory point control, you know, we're trailing in the scoreline. Maxims are also a really good way of helping uh, with that. So, oh, the double Zisk guns here. Find the Panzer IV. That Panzer IV has to be careful here. Uh, Panzer Faust, was that a Panzer Faust connecting? As well as the Panzer IV shot? No, it wasn't, okay. But yeah, Kanji definitely in the ascendancy now. Once you have this hard point fortified with Zis guns and you're able to hold this position on Langriskaya, it's always really strong. So Kanji definitely getting that done for now. And it's going to be on Inkaruna to break this. Now we do have the Panzerwerfer, which is the beginning of that. Has it still not fired? Wow, he's actually... Okay, here we go. So he's going for the Zis guns. Yeah. Hmm. A frankly middling opening barrage there with the Panzerwerfer. Perhaps getting a little bit unlucky with the spread, but um, it feels like Kanji was well aware that that barrage was coming. Uh, nice reaction, and they're going to pull the most promising targets away from the barrage there. So nicely done there by Kanji. Going to survive that opening barrage without game-changing damage there from the Panzerwerfer. So going to be another 100 seconds or so before that Panzerwerfer gets another chance to influence this game. And that's again why I'm kind of suggesting 
that the Brumbar is a, is a better choice, definitely on smaller maps as well, where the Brumbar's slow speed is much less of a weakness, uh, because the Brumbar gets a chance to change the game like every few seconds, you know, it's chipping in for value, and it really makes your opponent's inventory, like, puts them on alert, it's such a squad wipey unit, the Brumbar. Whereas the Panzerwerfer, you're only eking value out of it like every hundred or se hundred seconds or so, and it's just like, I just don't know that it changes the dynamic of a game. If you are at parity or behind, I think the Panzerwerfer is super bad. Uh, if you are, like, comfortably ahead, then sure, I think the Panzerwerfer starts being fine there as, as your first, like, unit out under these circumstances, but, like, I don't know. I'm just not in love with this particular Panzerwerfer. Anyway, we've got a second T-3485 going to be hitting the field here, and that is going to... That is going to change the balance of the armor war in a massive way. This Panzer IV will be on notice. Now, the armor skirts are finished, and that's going to help. But And there's, is it, are we up to double pack gun? No, just still only one pack gun. Still reeling from the loss of that pack gun earlier on. So, with double Zisk gun, double T-3485, the Soviet player, I feel like, is going to be very well positioned. Look at these Zisk gun barrages, making it look so good, this game. Finds an epic cluster of Axis value there. Splashing the pioneers, forcing the pack gun to reposition and getting some good damage there, and basically holding middle VP, which is material when you are trailing 257 to 368 after a rough start as allied. So I really like what I'm seeing here. Kanji is putting together a nice cerebral defense of mid here. Still, for my money, lacking a Maxim gun. I really think a source of suppression really counters your opponent's key strengths in this game. It's going to be a Stug G here for Inkaruna. Okay. Uh, I actually quite like that. Okay, I, I like the Stug G here because it's a mobile unit which is very good against T-3485s as long as it has a unit to hide behind. And the Panzer IV is that unit to hide behind. So the synergy here of Stug G Panzer IV should be an effective tool at mitigating the effectiveness of the T-3485s. It is a fragile solution. If those T-35s catch the Stug or the Panzer IV out of position for a moment, their DPS is such that like you just don't get a chance to really respond with the Axis player. You just lose those units. So... This is a fragile position to be in. Whoa, the T-3485s as well. Going to go for an overrun here. Looking for that MG-42 uh, squad. Now, the pack gun and the Panzer IV will be here. Oh, my God. Splashing one of those T-3485 shells in there. But the engine gets broken. The pack guns are here. The Panzer IV is here. This could very well be a dead medium for the Soviet player. Oh, yikes. Oh, no. This was a trade that we didn't want to be making. Well, it's not even a trade. He's just going to lose the tank. Actually, you know what? The Panzer IV has to overextend a bit to come and get this fragmentation bombing run coming down in a crucial location. The Zisk guns are exposed! He gets one of the Zisk guns. Is that the Panzerwerfer barrage coming in as well there? It is. That's a lot of damage, but somehow one of the Zisk guns survives to get the trade on the Panzer IV. Nice stuff there. Uh, Kanji actually coming out probably ahead in that exchange. You'll trade a medium for a medium if your opponent throws in 200 extra munitions and a Stug! Okay, well, that's a beautiful exchange there for Kanji. Nice stuff there. And, I mean, barring the scoreline deficit... Okay, he loses the T-70, and that is a shame, but it's still acceptable. If you look at the top left, look at the top right. When the dust settles, I definitely prefer the Soviet position here. He's going to have to spend a moment... Let's crack the tack. Both of these players here are going to have to spend a moment falling back, reinforcing, rearming, getting back on their feet. But I, when the dust settles, I still definitely prefer the Soviet position here. Uh, yep. God damn, look at us go on 40 viewers. Awesome. This is pretty exciting and awesome stuff. Yeah, the Panzer IV almost took the two T-34s uh, and the two Zisk guns, but it didn't. Even with help from the frag bombing run and the Panzerwerfer, it's actually just not enough. All right, whilst our two players rearm, refuel, refresh, so will I, finishing the last of my tea there. Ready to cast the second half of this game, which has been pretty good, actually. Yeah, this has been an interesting early and mid game, and we're now firmly moving towards the late game. Panzerwerfer are going to chip in a barrage here. Conscript's caught under, but the, the scatter on those rockets is going to be pretty lucky there for Kanji. The Conscript's taking basically only minor damage. Uh, it's going to be another T-34. Now, this is a 76. So, okay, we've got a regular T-34 coming out here, and that is still fine, to be honest. As long as you are ahead, as long as you are the overdog, if you want to think of it that way, uh, then building T-34s, I think, is absolutely fine. They're a really good way of just converting value to battlefield presence, converting resources to battlefield value. And uh, 
There was a Stug G on the queue there momentarily. That gets cancelled, and it's going to be another Panzer IV. And that's just fine here for Kanji. That'll be one Panzer IV with a pack gun for support against the two um, Soviet mediums. And we all know that's a, definitely a fight that the Soviet player can take, especially with the two Zis guns, which are once again going to take up pride of position on the middle of the field. This is where you want to be on Langriskaya. This is very clustered to be, though. You know your opponent has a Panzerwerfer. So, like, I think I'd prefer, like, one Zisk gun here and one Zisk gun here or something, just to, like, provide that overlapping field of fire and mitigate the effectiveness of your opponent's rocket artillery. Um... <clears throat> and Kanji just creeping forwards here, finding additional value, turning the screws, putting the pressure on, Trying to take some ground on the north, sorry, on the south side of the map here. Engineers pushing forwards. Oh, Panzerwerfer Barrage! And it looks like uh, that will force a couple of fullbacks, which is value, but uh, definitely not, not what Inkaruna would have been hoping for there. It's going to be a Katusha coming out here next for Kanji. Love the choice. That Katusha has plenty of medium armor to hide behind. And any any game that's going to be about holding the victory points, I love a Katusha on because the duration of the barrage is so high. It really just stops your opponent capturing a victory point for quite a long time. So I really like that. Uh, Stormtrooper is going to make a run here for the Zis guns. We'll fluster them back. That enables the pack gun and the Panzer IV to push forwards. Uh, now the side armor on this T-34 is exposed, but it looks like he won't be punished for it yet. His pack gun is still firing though. All right, here comes the Katusha, and I'm I'm a bit worried now because basically, if you imagine a heat map of where the Vermac units have been moving over the last five minutes of this game, it is basically all in this circle here. Like he's basically just been holding this line and like and basically accessing his base. Uh oh, the Panzer IV actually being caught out by the, the T-3485 coming in for a bit of a dive though into the pack gun. This is risky. I don't think you can get the Panzer IV and keep your medium. What the Zis guns creeping in? Barrage to counter the Pack 40 as well. Oh my god, that's sick. Okay, he loses the T-3485. But when you're this far ahead, that's kind of fine. He still has a medium tank in the game. And um, when you're ahead, usually trades are good. I think that's definitely the case here. Now the Katusha is just going to be firing for value, raining death into the Axis base. The T-3476 pushing in. I'd love him to be on um, hold fire for vehicle just to look for the look for the shots on the Panzerwerfer. Now the Panzerwerfer is going to take a barrage here and he's going to aim for the Zis guns. Oh my god, he gets so unlucky with the spread. Actually doesn't get the wipe on one of those guns. That's a bit unlucky there. I feel like he's been consistently a bit unlucky with the Panzerwerfer spreads this game. And we're still a ways away from VET 2 as well, which is where it gets the rate of fire increase. Okay, let's investigate the situation here. The triple cap still established. Midfield control still in Kanji's hands. Uh, Inkaruna right now basically forced to fight for the doorstep of his base, which, as we all know, is the most dire position to be in in Company of Heroes 2. So this is going to be exceedingly difficult. We've lost the Panzer IV. We have one pack gun for hard AT. We do still have a serviceable core infantry roster. The MG42 is a notable advantage, which the Soviet player doesn't really have an answer for other than the Katusha. Um, and the Ziskun Barrage is actually, I've got to say, actually, Kanji making me remember that Ziskun Barrage is an ability that can affect games. So, okay. Um, and the Molotov actually connects onto this MG42. Oh no, forcing it back immediately. And this is just a, another forlorn Axis advance. I mean, without the MG42 to concrete our position here, we're just trading for damage and we're going to have to fall back. So this is, yeah, this will not be enough here. So Inkaruna are going to have to fall back and come up with a new plan again. Take another bite at this apple. Uh, but time is running away. T time is running out, okay? For the first time now, the Allied forces will be leading in the scoreline and we're bleeding out under a triple cap here. So the door closing quickly on Inkaruna here. Now we do have some fuel and but we're compelled to spend our manpower to maintain these in these forces so we're not really going to be able to spend that fuel anytime soon here so i think inkaruna is in a really tough place and how many times do we see this this is kind of what i was hinting at earlier on when i said that german infantry doctrine addresses so many weaknesses that vermac players have and players in the in the meta at the moment are loving it as another panzerwerfer barrage here kind of uh, not really i mean forcing a couple of fallbacks but that's that's not enough is it and the katusha are actually going to respond Ooh. Just finding, yeah, not a lot. Um, but yeah, again, we're just feeling like German infantry 
doesn't have the answers that Vermac players need in the late game. And I know that's not why you take this commander. And I know it still has frag bombing run, which is useful if you have the munitions. But like, it's not enough to survive the early and mid game as Vermax. You have to have a plan for the late game. And I don't feel like German infantry helps you out with that plan. There's no, there's no let's stabilize and build Tiger. There's no Panzer tactician to make all of our vehicles just better. And like, I get that having five man infantry squads with better DPS is good and it addresses one of Vermax's core weaknesses. But I feel like if that's your problem, then the German defensive doctrine actually just answers that better. You get Ostrapen, you can skip tech, you get the Stug E, and we saw in the last game on the on here on Langriskaya just how effective all of those things are. And it's like now we're seeing a stark comparison with German infantry doctrine, and it's like, is this really giving you as much as an Ostrapen commander? I just don't feel like it is. Um, and I just I feel like I feel like the win rate on German infantry doctrine is just doesn't is not justifying how valued it appears to be in the meta and how often we're seeing Vermont players taking it so I don't know I'm, I'm just forced to conclude that this is just another game where German infantry doctrine despite getting the great start that, that German infantry doctrine would want you know we had munitions we got squad leader upgrades we got to that German infantry early and mid game composition that we want to have and it's just actually not really enough against like generic Soviet stuff and now we do have uh, a Maxim gun on the roster and, and I think that's the Almost the checkmate piece of the composition here. Oh god, he gets the pack gun as well. He can pick this off. That is basically game. The Panzer IV is going to come in here, but that is, it's just not enough. Um, not with doubles this gun. Uh, he, he's probably, I mean, is he going to be able to jump on the, if he gets the element of surprise here, is he going to be able to jump on the T-34? Not really. I mean, the Zisk guns, doubles this gun here are covering. Yeah. Panzer IV gets scouted. The T-34 will kite back. Doesn't, has no interest in engaging the German medium until it's repaired. And now the core infantry here for Inkaruna has been savaged. And I think that that is probably game. Um, <coughs> uh, yeah, I mean, there's th definitely it's not just on German infantry doctrine. Oh, God, this Katusha barrage just finds the repairing pioneers. Definitely it's not on all on German infantry doctrine. You know, setting aside the commander choice, there are moments in this game where if Inkaruna had made different decisions and done different things, especially with his Panzer Fours, yeah, things could have been different. But I still feel like you don't, you're not giving yourself the best shot in the game with this commander. It feels like to me anyway. Um, yeah, he lost the pack and now he's really, really gasping for anti-tank. And this, this Soviet army is, is looking great now. <clears throat> we did just see a game on Langriskaya where we saw a player who I thought was essentially out of the game demonstrate that they were very much alive and kicking. So, is there any hope of a recovery here for Inkaruna? It does feel bleak, doesn't it? It feels very bleak, especially with a T-3485 now out. Um... Panzerwerfer Barrage here comes in very nicely, kills the crew of one of the Zisk guns, forces the guards back. I mean, this is inconvenient, but again, not really game-changing damage. Uh, but I like what we're doing here for Inkaruna. We actually managed to get Axis Boots onto West, uh, so that is going to help stem the bleeding for now. Um, at 167, under 194. So, you know, if we can stabilize here... We don't actually need to hold the map for very long to force this Soviet player out. Remember, Inkaruna did get a lot of work done early on, which means that this scoreline is close. If we can somehow stabilize... Oh god, but here come the T-34s, and this is the problem. This Axis army is just so fragile. And yeah, that'll be a dead Panzer IV. Ain't no way that this Panzer IV is going to survive this. Mark vehicle coming down for some reason. Pretty sure that was a done deal before we threw 80 munitions in there, but you know, whatever. And that will be game. Wow. So that game considerably more one-sided than the last one we uh, we caught here. And, uh, I mean, the jury's out on German Infantry Doctrine. It really is. And as I said, I may have only cast 20 or 25 games with that commander. And that is not a large sample size. But I am um, fairly sure that players are overvaluing German Infantry Doctrine in the present meta. I think we are still seeing it too much. We're seeing it less than we used to. But I think we're still seeing it too much. It just doesn't seem doesn't seem great it is it doesn't appear to win games that i am watching so i, I don't know um but anyway a fantastic display here from uh, kanji able to recover from a pretty nice nasty start where the german infantry doctrine was able to do german infantry stuff um and uh yeah able to recover the game into a pretty nice place to be honest now 
it is half past three in England, which is where I am. Um, and I was I was saying that we were only going to cast one more game, but we are up to forty three viewers, which is pretty damn cool. So I actually just and I'm loving I'm just feeling the casting right now. I'm having I'm having fun here. So I think I'm I'm going to cast another. Not even going to take a break. Just going to cast another, and then. Then I've got to call it a day because my voice is starting to hurt. How long have we been up for now? Only two and a half hours. Okay. Oh, yeah, because I started an hour late, didn't I? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, cool. All right. So let's jump into the live game lobby and see what we've got available. We've got 14 viewers on Fame and Villa Approach for Happy Cat and P. So P is PFC, right? That is the PFC, am I right? That is PFC, yeah. Okay. And Happy Cat, who the hell are you, mate? I don't know. So we've got that game on Famonville. We've got a Crossing in the Woods game between Rito Gargamel and Augustine, who honestly I don't recognize either of these guys. So yeah, it's got to be that top game, hasn't it? None of these others look any good. All right, let's cast this one. Does anyone know who Happy Cat is? Okay, reportedly a good Chinese player. So I'm going to start loading that game up. Thank you very much. Uh, who was that? Who came in with the information there? Luciano, thank you very much for the info. Whilst that game loads in, I'm going to bring you all guys back to... A picture of my face. Hello, everybody. Welcome aboard. Uh, thank you so much for the raid. It is awesome to have so many viewers today. Uh, let's uh, let's bring you all a schedule so that uh, you guys can know when and where I'll be casting next. Uh, we're doing midday magpie, uh, just live casting games and doing whatever I feel like after that. Um, we're doing Monday, Wednesday, and Friday this week. We start at 1100 hours GMT. Uh, that's midday where I am. You can use Google to figure out what that is in your time zone. Um, we're casting live on Twitch here. That's twitch.tv slash magpie842. And you can find the VODs if you're unable to join us live over at youtube.com slash magpie842. So, uh, yeah, thank you very much. And a very warm welcome to everybody who's new to the channel today. And without further ado, let's jump right back into this next game, which we have here on Fame and Villa Approach, featuring a spawning in the north playing as the OKW pieces. It is going to be Happy Cat. And a spawning in the south playing as the United States forces. It's PFC. So, uh, by all accounts, Happy Cat, uh, a very accomplished Chinese player. And it's actually quite rare that we see this many viewers on the live game lobby around about this time when I'm casting, at least. America, not quite awaken on the ladder yet. So, um, this one ought to be a good game. Uh, looks like PFC going to go straight ahead here and pick the American Infantry Doctrine. Uh, so, or Infantry Company, as the Americans like to call their stuff. Uh, so, yeah, one of the lesser seen, but increasingly popular in recent times, Commanders, this one. Um, characterized, of course, by the incredibly powerful access to the 1919 LMG racks, which makes uh, America's already vastly powerful riflemen just much more killy. So, it's hard to say no to that, isn't it? I mean, that's, that's a pretty tempting proposition for any American player. Add to that the fact that you get the rifleman field defences with the mines, you get the mortar half-track as well, which we've seen dominate games, to be honest, recently on the channel. We've seen mortar half-track and double mortar half-track do really well on the channel lately. So, that all sounds pretty spicy. You get the time on target infantry uh, artillery barrage, which is pretty sick. And you have the distant hope that I will one day cast a game where a priest is used. Now, apparently, I'm guessing, because I've not seen one ever, the priest must be god-awful in the meta, because, like, literally players never build them. So, I don't know if it's just something that doesn't really do well with what USF have. Um, I don't know if it's just, like... I, I don't know why players aren't using this unit. It just players are never using this unit. I would love to see one. I would just love to see one. I have no idea what it looks like. I just don't know what it does to the game. Maybe we're going to see one today. I would love that. Uh, is P PFC? Yes, Anti Morale. P is PFC. Yeah. Um, so uh, yeah. Um, Happy Cat here. Um, as these game, as this game sort of rotates through the opening stages, nothing noteworthy happening just now. American forces just doing American force stuff on the map at the moment. Uh, Happy Cat is rolling with the Overwatch Doctrine, which somebody still needs to explain to me. Like, why are people taking this commander so often? Is it really just because Sector Assault is that good? Is it really just because of that? I mean, I get that Jaeger Lights are decent, and we've seen Goliaths be, like, middling on the channel recently, but I don't think those are reasons to take Commander by themselves. So is it really just the Sector Assault? Is Sector Assault that good? Uh, I guess it must be, because people are still taking this Commander. Uh, we've also got the Fortification Doctrine and the Luftwaffe Ground Forces Doctrine. Whoa! We've got some Austro uh, Sorry, we've got some Volksgrenadier up for grabs here. They will just about get out. That was a little bit close there for Happy Cat. 
We're going to preserve the lives of his uh, core infantry at this early stage, and that is crucial. If you lose a core infantry squad at the sub five minute mark in the game, you're going to have a bad time. <coughs> So, Schwervermach Schlepper is out. Let's check the tech for the American player, and it looks like we're going to have a lieutenant build, so, so far, so standard here for PFC. We have a lieutenant reporting in for duty. Garan's blazing, American forces doing American force stuff, but probably too many Germans here for them to take this fight. Wow, PFC staying and trading out to the last second. Fair enough. And it's going to be a battle group at HQ Strat here from Happy Tap. Oh, you know what we haven't done? Datton, if you're still there in chat, if you're still watching, of course, we haven't looked through the commanders. Oh, sorry, the bulletins. So let's do that. Looks like we've got uh, Volksgrenadier DPS times three here for Happy Cat. So, 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 so far, so standard. Whereas for PFC, it looks like, yep, it's uh, Rifleman DPS and Veterancy. So all the stuff that we are used to seeing from both these two players. So far, so very standard. Nobody taking anything super out there in terms of the bulletins. Just, uh, sorry, it's just, uh, chat's moving a little bit faster than I'm used to, so, like, having to keep half an eye on that and, like, see what's going on. It's always fun. Okay, we've got a light gun coming out. It's gonna be a light first build. Okay, out of this, be out of this battle group at HQ. Um, I mean, I like light guns, and I like them on this map, uh, a lot, because, I mean, Feynmanville is just quite small. It's quite easy to keep a light gun around this position on the map, and then it can fire pretty much into, like, there's just always going to be American units within range that it's going to be firing at, so this is fine. I hope... I mean, he's getting it very early. With just three squads of Volks and a Storm Pioneer squad, the Americans could overpower and get up on top of that light gun. So, as long as he's able to defend it, this should go on to be fine. It's quite early to be getting this, though. Uh, we, I'm kind of used to seeing um, uh, OKW players... Oh, whoa, 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 hang on, though. Oh, no. That for sure will be a squad wipe. This this should be a squad wipe anyway, unless he gets very lucky. Oh my god. Oh my god, this RNG. Okay, he actually gets that Volksgrenadier out of there. That is some insane RNG there for Happy Cat. Getting very lucky there. Um, wow. I think like four times out of five, that's a squad wipe. He's getting very lucky there. Jeez. Um, but yeah, he does get those Vox Grandiers out of there. I thought we were going to see, like, first blood, but no, 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 he's going to keep that one alive. Lucky stuff. Like, yeah, exactly, yeah, like versus USF when he actually doesn't have an MG or anything like that even, like, I mean, it's a pretty safe bet. You've seen Lieutenant Tech, he is probably going to get, um, a, a, um, a team weapon, but I mean... You've shown the lag now, so that basically it doesn't force the American player, but it heavily incentivizes the American player to go for the Stuart first, right? Uh, it just basically telegraphs that this Stuart is going to be better than your average Stuart because it's coming onto a field where you've spent like, what is it? How, how much does the light gun cost these days? I'm always, it's like 280? 270, yeah. Um, yeah, well, you've spent 270 on a, like a juicy meal for that Stuart, so. All right, I mean, here comes the Stuart, and the table is set for this Stuart to be quite the unit. It will, of course, be the Kingmaker for a few minutes here. No Kettenwerfer, actually, as well. Hmm. Hmm. Okay, cat, Happy Cat. We're going to have to see how well you micro against a Stuart, because this is going to be tough. Able to secure one of the victory points and about to secure a fuel point though so happy cat is doing the bare minimum to sort of gives them so gives themselves a shot as this game goes on that's a 50 cal coming onto the roster here momentarily for pfc that makes a lot of sense and happy cat needs a raquette and Werfer. i'm sure that that's what they'll be saving up for if it's not a raquette and Werfer, then things are grim <laughs> so here comes the steward and uh, we're going to see exactly how much damage this thing can wreak upon the uh, Axis lines. Hang on now. Gets a squad wipe on some riflemen. Storm Pioneers there with the second star of Veterancy, which is a big DPS bump for them. Able to pick up some riflemen there. Now, I have to assume, given that they're all that's going on over here, although I, I was late to the scene, it seems like that was probably an unforced error out of PFC, just a slightly late fallback on those riflemen. Getting a little too close to the uh, STGs. Wow, as well. These Volksgrenadiers able to slap a Panzerfaust. 
onto the Stuart, so that's going to immediately mitigate the effectiveness of this Stuart. It's going to have to go and repair. It's going to buy yourself 30 or 40 seconds where this Stuart is not going to be rampant on the map, and that, that probably is enough for you to get this Kettenworth out. So, you know, getting a nice squad wipe and getting a, a Panzerfaust onto the Stuart means that uh, actually Happy Cat is in a reasonable position now. So I actually don't mind this so bad. We've just got way too many high-level veterans chipping in in chat. Every time I look down in chat, it's just like loads of ridiculously good points and like well-thought-out advice and stuff. <laughs> way to go, chat! <laughs> Everybody's having a, a decent a decent um, company of heroes to debate in there. It's really good. It's almost too high-level for me. I'm loving it. <laughs> Losing the rifles was not good. There we go. There's some commentary on my level. You're right. anti Morali there. Keeping it simple. Love it. Okay, so Schwerbermack Schlepper coming out onto the field here. Schwerpanzer HQ will be deployed, and it looks like he's going for the standard on the doorstep positioning rather than the western uh, sort of fuel covering position for that for that building. Light gun casting in some good shots, getting some good damage onto the uh, rifleman there. And uh, if he could get an MG34 into this posi into this uh, roster, then I would really love it for the uh, Axis player. He's just lost his Storm Pioneers. Where, where were they? He's just lost the Storm Pioneers. Oh god, they got they got stewarded, heavily stewarded. All right, so the Stuart there, finding value, striking back, getting vengeance for the loss of that Rifleman squad. I mean, look at the top left, look at the top right. This American army is literally faster, harder, bigger, meaner, stronger. All of the words. Basically, that whole Daft Punk song. Uh, and now... Okay, the Kettenwerfer is going to control the Stuart for a moment, but now you have to fall it back, right? Oh god, the Volksgrenadiers are on the chopping block. Actually, the Focus Fire going into the Kettenwerfer, not the Volksgrenadiers. So that's... Kind of slightly lucky, perhaps, for Happy Cat, but look at the minimap. Vast swathes of land are turning red right now. These American forces for PFC are rampant. And uh, M1 AT gun, Captain Tech has um, come down, actually. So I love it when American players side tech and complete the tech tree. And uh, he's doing it earlier rather than later. And we're going to get the safety... M no, he cancels the M1 AT gun. Okay. Cancels the M1 AT gun to get a mortar half-track. I love it. That is going to be a good mortar half track as long as he doesn't fall asleep on the micro. Which from PFC I would be surprised. Uh, yep, so that mortar half track already has very tempting targets and it's a very slippery unit to get to grips with. And it's just, it's one of the easier units to get to Vet 3 and just have it consistently be a source of grindy value. So that's probably going to be really hard for uh, Happy Cat to deal with. Obersoldaten are fine, but I feel like actually even Obersoldaten are largely covered by the resources that the American player has. Uh, I mean, with a machine gun and a mortar half track out there, and 1919 LMGs coming up on these um, on these riflemen, is a uh, Volksgrenadier. Uh, sorry, are Obersoldaten really going to help you turn the tide out here? I'm not sure. Yeah, mortar half track indeed. Absolutely. Whoa, the light gun actually finding hits on this mortar half track. That is going to be vetting it up at a very rapid rate. That's a nice hit to have gotten. Yeah, 1919 LMGs popping up on all this American infantry. I feel like the Axis, the Axis position is now so bad. I'm going to... I know that there's fighting going on, but I really want to crack the tack. Let's do it. We're going to crack the tack. Look at this. Look at this. How do you engage into this as the Axis player? I'm actually going to be a little bit critical of this Schwerpanzer HQ positioning because although this is quite standard and although it does cover a couple of really important points, it doesn't cover a VP or a fuel point. And I feel like, as per the game we saw earlier on today, I feel like there was a window where we could have gotten the Schwerpanzer HQ established into this very difficult position here. And from there, it at least essentially for this stage in the game guarantees you some fuel income. And that I feel like Happy Cat desperately needs. So... I know I'm a caster with omnipotent vision and I, you know, I've Fog of War turned off and everything. And these players are really in the thick of it, making decisions as they go with the imperfect information that they have. But, you know, I feel like if we were able to get the Schwerpanzer HQ into this position, then the, then the um, OKW's position would be would be a lot more playable from here. It would have been just, just a little bit better. Oh my god, is this double 50 cal? Oh god. That is the perfect... Double 50 cal is like the perfect thing to close the door on this axis. Like, how do you get out on the map? When your opponent has Stuart, double 50 cal, 1919 LMG core American infantry. Oh my god, this is going to be so rough. Now, Happy Cat still has 388 tickets, but we're under triple cap bleed now. So this is going to be rough AF. Point is being 
I mean, is this a super risky position? I don't know. Yeah, going for another light gun? Hmm, that's a difficult one to digest. I actually think I quite like the second light gun, if I'm honest, because this is going to be a game where you're having difficulty accessing the map, but at least a light gun is going to be an efficient choice. It's going to be firing, it's going to be dealing damage. And right now, barrages and smoke are quite good, because your opponent has 250 cals. So I actually don't hate the second light gun. It's not too bad. And if you tax the American infantry enough, perhaps you can find a window to get out and get something done. I mean, we did just get this victory point somehow, so that's... You know, we're playing for time, we're getting the bare minimum done out here. Happy Cat is doing everything they can to set themselves up for a chance to come back in this game. Uh, but, I mean, we are one mistake away from basically this game being over and the door being actually just closed on any chance for Happy Cat. Um, so, Happy Cat has a lot of work to do. M1 AT gun, okay, interesting. I feel like this M1 AT gun is actually good for the uh, Axis player, right? Because there are no good targets for this unit. Uh, oh, or is he going to siege down? Oh my god, if he uses this M1 AT gun to siege down the Schwerpanzer HQ, that is game. That is just, you are done. Like, so, okay, actually, maybe this M1 AT gun is more sinister than I thought. Maybe this is not an anti-tank insurance policy. Maybe this is to actually siege down the, uh, to siege down the, um, the Schwerpanzer HQ. And if that's the case, then that is brutal. And uh, then this game is probably going to come to a, an abrupt conclusion. So we'll see. I'm really hoping... I'm, actually, for PFC, it would be beautiful. Let's hope he's going to send it to siege down that, that structure. Uh, so here it comes. Yeah. Yeah. If he, if he sieges down the Schwerpanzer HQ, that is a checkmate move. Hey, we're seeing the delayed fuse mortar barrage. Oh, we, we only rarely see this. Ooh. Getting some damage in. This is a weird ability. I'm not sure that I like it. How many munitions does it cost? You ready to roll out? 25, so pretty affordable. And you do get some pretty heavy blasts. It's probably quite good for sieging down a Schwerpanzer HQ. Alright, so it looks like the AT gun is actually not being used immediately to siege down the Schwerpanzer HQ. So I'd... But I feel like, you know... If... If we put the 50 cals, like, one here, one here, or something... Actually, that's too close. But if we, if we move up the 50 cals, have some supporting infantry with the Stuart to close any gaps or take care of any flanking moves, then we can use the Mortar Half-Track and the uh, M1 AT gun to siege down that Schwerpanzer HQ. And I think that that is just a neck snap move that would just end the game immediately. But anyway, somehow, Happy Cat here gets gets two of the victory points. It actually gets off of the clock. That is massive. Obersoldaten getting into a nice position, starting to find some value. Volksgrenadiers, with some veterancy and STGs, actually now able to come out and start doing something against this American infantry. Bundle grenade comes down, but that will be a miss. Nicely uh, nicely fallen back there from PFC. But signs of life here from uh, Happy Cat. Those two light guns are consistently finding value. One of them up to two stars of veterancy. What does it get then? Rate of fire? Oh, that's not great. Oh, yeah, I forgot. The veterancy on light guns is, like, super bad, isn't it? It's, like, really, like... It just feels really inconsequential most of the time, doesn't it? I mean, at least to me. So, yeah. Okay. Well, Happy Cat is still alive, and playing for time in a pretty effective way... If there was ever the beginnings of a comeback, it does start looking like this. Uh, and we're building up to an amount of fuel where we could... Have we got Schwer Panzer H? Yeah, we've got Panzer Authorization. So if we can play for time for a couple more minutes, we can take a fuel choice, see what the game looks like after that. Uh, clearly this is a table where a Panzer IV would actually be okay. Um... Although I usually hate building medium tanks when we're behind. Oh god, the delayed fuse mortar barrage coming down over here. That's really nice, actually, to counter the light guns. Very nice positioning. Get some damage onto the Axis units as they attempt to leave the base. 50 cal in a beautiful position, providing so much value. We'll see if these STGs and the Oversoul Dutton actually have the DPS to overcome it. It's not looking good right now. These Volks Grenadiers desperately trying to take fuel, and they may actually be able to decap that. I don't think they'll have enough time to cap it, though. Major tech, of course, is done for the American player. It has been done for a while. And we're coming up to the amount of fuel where we could see a, t a choice taken from that major tech here momentarily. Or, fingers crossed, we might see a priest. Come on, priest game. I want to see it. I want to see a priest. I've just never seen one. It'd be so cool. 
All right. The Rakettenwerfer. Oh no, the Rakettenwerfer gets looted by American forces, <gasps> and it's going to be a Sherman, which is infinitely better than a Priest, probably here. And that is got to be game. One has to imagine that this Sherman, without a Kettenwerfer, that has to be game. Well, time will tell. Triple cap re-established for crap attack. You can see the situation dire. Happy Cat will be forced to fight for the doorstep of their base. And uh, there's very little here, I believe, that can be done. PFC putting on a very convincing display of infantry company tactics here. Using the mortar half-track, using the 1919 LMGs, making them look very good. Well, I'm okay with that. Okay, a Panzer IV is taken. And the Schwerpanzer HQ actually finds the captain there. There are some squad wipeable shots that are firing into that captain, but he will, he will escape. A little bit close there for the American player PFC. Could get a pack 43. Interesting suggestion. I had totally forgotten about that, but yeah, it probably would get nuked, right? Because time on time on target artillery barrage is available, and you know we've already got a mortar half track, so with the with the delayed fuse barrage, so I feel like a pack 43 is actually just untenable. Uh, interesting suggestion though, and I had forgotten it was an option. Oh yeah, because we've got fortification doctrine. Oh yikes! What is that actually doing? That's good. Nothing. Oh, that's a confusing commander pick for me. Why has he picked this? Somebody help me out. All right. Anyway, here comes the Panzer IV, and this represents a glimmer, a ray of hope. If this Panzer IV is able to somehow c contain or defeat the Sherman, or find the mortar half track, maybe we can find a way back into the game here for Happy Cat. I mean, 241 tickets. We're under a slow bleed right now. Uh, Happy Cat is making this win take as long as possible and be as miserable as possible for PFC. Is still terrible, obviously. But we have rebuilt a Kettenwerfer as well, actually. So that's good. We'd love to have an MG. If we could capture a 50 cal, this game is actually sort of start, starting to look okay. Anyway, here comes the Panzer IV. The Stuart is here to mess with the Panzer IV. The, the, uh, the Rakettenwerfer actually gets picked off. Nicely done. Oversold Art and just doing massive amounts of uh, DPS to, to weapon teams, as usual. The Panzer IV and this Sherman sort of awkwardly exchanging around this hedge here. Axis forces are pushing. He manages to... He's Oh, yeah, he's probably going to grab fuel here. And the Panzer IV was getting the upper hand of that exchange, but the uh, the heat rounds, what are they? The discarding Shabbat rounds, what are they called? Discarding Shabbat rounds, the tungsten rounds, going to be coming down on that M1 AT gun. That will screen the Panzer IV out of this fight. Lovely shot from the Sherman there, giving three Volksgrenadiers. That is going to blunt the momentum of this uh, infantry advance. And I don't think we're going to be able to hold on to fuel here. Additional Volksgrenadiers are moving up. The light gun's still scoring damage from back there. The uh, Panzer IV has its gun busted, though, and has to fall back for now. Are we going to get fuel? Oh, any bit, any gasp of fuel here would be so good. An incendiary grenade actually going to break these two rifle squads. So I feel like these Volksgrenadiers are actually going to grab fuel. And that is, that is some value to be obtained there. Happy Cat actually finding something out on the map. Has no storm pioneers. Oh, yikes. Yeah, has to rebuild those. Oh, no. Oh, I forgot about that. Okay, so this Panzer IV is going to be out of the fight for a while. Because we have to wait for the storm pioneers to build. Even getting a Faust onto a Stuart here. Uh, whoa! And then the light gun hitting for, for good damage onto that Stuart. Nice work. Light gun at three stars of veterancy, at which it gets... Uh, faster subsequent barrages. Okay, so that is kind of meaningful. When do we just get the faster rate of fire? Oh, it never gets faster rate of fire? Oh, okay. Yeah, no wonder I don't like the uh, light gun accuracy, uh, the light gun veterancy. Okay, well... Let's crack the tack. Happy Cat is uh, holding on to a fuel point for a decent stretch of uh, time here, and holding on to a victory point is making the bleed slow. I mean, this does look like a game where the OKW player could stabilize and slowly get back into this Panzer IV with one star of veterancy now. So has Blitz. That does make it much more slippery to get to grips with. Uh, Storm Pioneers with the repair tool. Going to repair that one nice and quick. 
But this is still an American player with a Sherman and 1919 LMGs and 250 cals and a Kettenwerfer and an M1 and like still has the mortar half track, just plying its deadly trade and finding value. This is such a difficult game to access the map for the OKW player who's going to come for a desperate push into mid now. And as long as he's putting pressure on mid, you know, he's holding on to east at the same time. So I don't hate this. There are no units actually holding east, though, so as soon as one American infantry squad heads that way, he will lose the VP. Panzer IV comes forward, going to take some shots into the flank of the American units. But the M1AT gun is in position. The Sherman as well, going to transition across, although that one is on HE, HE shells right now. And I think... I think there's just not enough momentum here. Happy Cat will not be able to access this area of the map. Nice defense here from PFC. But I mean, to be honest, for me, the real story is that there's that Happy Cat is still holding on to fuel and victory point out here in East. That's massive. And we're up to like 120 odd fuel here for the Axis player. So I don't know. Is he going to survive long enough to get another fuel choice out? Vet 5 is damage pendant. Okay. Hey, Datton. There you are, bro. Okay, Kettenwerfer finds the mortar half track. Nice stuff there. These 50 cals are the real obstacle, though. It's just... Even with the double lag, it just seems these 50 cals are controlling the German infantry advance so nicely. Finally, the lags actually find this 50 cal. We'll force one of them back, but this is why we have two. Where's the other one right now? Yeah, just garrisoning west at the moment. I feel like if Happy Cat was ever able to get an MG34, this game would have been completely different. Because then you can actually cement your advances. Then, then you can actually punish this amazing American infantry, reduce its efficiency. But I'll be honest with you, I'm surprised at how well this Panzer IV has been doing. With double AT gun and a Sherman, this Panzer IV has been consistently finding value. Over Soldat and get on to mid. The 50 cal is here, though. And the Ligs begin to counter it. We're using barrages and not smoke, though. I'm not sure if I wouldn't just prefer smoke to let your infantry work. Somebody help me out. Why, why did he choose the Fortification Doctrine? I'm super confused. Like... Because you normally only choose a commander when you're sure it's about to do something good for you, right? Otherwise, you just leave the option open and, you know, it's rare to take a commander unless you pick one right when the game starts because it's just what you want to be doing. If you leave yourself the option for a commander, it's rare to just pick one with no value. So, like, am I missing something? What 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 value has this commander provided? S-mine spam? Have there been S-mines? I haven't... S I don't know. Yeah, I don't know. I'm, I'm a little bit confused by this commander pick, to be honest. To be honest, I wasn't super impressed with the commander roster. Oh no, loses a Vox Grenadier squad there. Uh, we can ill afford core infantry squad wipes at this point in the game. Need to be spare at saving that manpower. To be honest, actually, we could get a Panther out, like, mm, relatively rapidly here. Oversold Art and again going to be spearheading the assault onto this point. But there's a Sherman with HE shells. This is so risky. Yeah, he has to fall back. And, uh... Volks Grenadiers will step up to the mark. Panzer IV and Rakettenwerfer get a nice engage onto the Sir Sherman. Has to fall back. And the Panzer IV can wipe infantry squads. Okay, he's not going to get the cannon shell into that squad. This Panzer IV is impressing me, actually. Happy Cat has been on point with this Panzer IV. And, like, German infantry, we're off the clock again. 146 tickets. Are we stabilizing here? I don't know. Happy Cat is floating a lot of fuel and building up a manpower bank here. So there's going to be a, a Panther, probably, and a Jackson, actually, preemptively coming out here for BFC. This Jackson makes a lot of sense. It's This Panzer IV has been problematic for long enough that I think it definitely justifies a Jackson by itself. As well as that, of course, the Jackson is a really good insurance policy against additional Axis fuel unit choices. So, oh, wow. Hang on, though. Rakettenwerfer finds the water, mortar half-track. Uh, gets the kill. All right. Nice. We're finding some value here. Happy Cat pushing forwards. Gets the cutoff. All right, Happy Cat. Signs of life here. Obersoldat and in a great position. Stacking on DPS. Where are the MGs? One of them still out in the side. The other one only with Volks under arc. 
And those Volks, to be honest, have already done the damage. This cutoff is damage enough. So that's lovely. Delayed fuse. No, sorry, that was a pineapple coming down off of these uh, riflemen. Gets the Kettenwerfer there. So finding some uh, finding some damage on the backswing here is PFC. PFC. The Sherman coming in. Volks Grenadiers on death's door. Obersoldat next on the chopping block. Time on artillery. Sorry, no. This is the zeroing artillery. So maybe that is why we chose this commander. How much was that? 300 munitions? Jesus. I mean, it, it looks good. Gets the M1 AT gun. It's continuing to rain absurd amounts of explosives into this area. Second Panzer IV? Help me understand. Why is he going for a second Panzer IV? I don't get it. I don't get it. Surely we want, like, Jagdpanzer or Panther at this stage, right? I don't... Second Panzer IV? I guess you can beat a Jackson with second Panzer IV, and the Panzer IVs are better against infantry. Okay, you know what? On reflection, I don't hate the second Panzer IV. Yeah, the OKW Panzer IV is pretty damn nice. Cut off at what price? I mean, good question, Anti Morale. Um, we lost one of the Kettenwerfers. I, I don't know. But I mean, it wasn't just the cut off, though, remember? He also picked up the mortar half track. And the Lieutenant? I feel like the Lieutenant has died over that last phase of play as well, actually. Dude, Multihog, I would love to cast some big tournaments with Stormless and stuff. Actually, in years gone by, Stormless AE and I were um, kind of relics, like, cast a squad for um, some, of the, some of the big tournaments back then. Um, which were really fun. I would love to get back involved with that kind of stuff, especially now that you know, it's coronavirus pandemic lockdown. I got nothing but time these days, buddy. Nothing but time. Um, anyway, looks like American forces making a play for mid control here. Obersol Darton and Volks Grenadiers with two Panzer fours providing enough cover that American infantry are going to have a hard time getting onto this victory point. The 50 cal is in a lovely position, but the light guns are going to barrage that one back. And the Panzer fours just eking forwards, trying to get some work done, but the Jackson really is uh, screening them out of the fight here. And... Uh, I mean, these, the German infantry is putting up a... Whoa, he gets the 50 cal. What the... Did he get a, 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 a rifleman squad wipe as well? I feel like both of these armies are getting a bit exhausted in terms of their infantry roster. And like, whoa. This is now a double cap for the OKW player. And the American player without infantry support is having a difficult time engaging into this. Uh, how is Happy Cap making this work? Five star light gun? Damn, son. Wow. Huh, that is interesting to hear, Multihog. Thanks. Um, I mean, it's been ages since I talked to Stormless. I'll, uh, I'll send him a, I'll reach on out to him and say hi because uh, I was, um, AE was actually in chat the other day and uh, reminded me of the good times that we had casting back then. You know, actually, there was this one time and uh, Relic actually, Relic, Relicum invited a whole bunch of us, like some top players, some map designers, and a couple of us casters to um, this video games expo in London. And good, we, we, it was it was so fun hanging out with everyone at IRL. We had like, we just had a hilarious day and then a night out in London and good God, it was hilarious times. Yeah, you're right. I should reach out to Stormless and say hi. That's a, thanks for chipping in that one, Morty Hog. Good idea. Oh, thank you. Morty Hog with the super kind words there in chat. Loving it. Anyway, looks like PFC pushing forwards pretty damn hard here. Uh... Sherman leading the charge. Good support is here. Slightly awkward position for the American player, though. And actually, it looks like the 50 cal not set up at the crucial moment. Volks Grenadiers forced to GTFO anyway, though. Too much damage on the Panzer IV. And three stars... Sorry, on the Sherman. Three stars of veterancy finishing up on the Panzer IV, though. Improves mobility and rate of fire. Oof, so that's a really good... Uh, that's a really good star of veterancy to get there. So, I mean, happy cat... We're back on the bleed, though, and that's the main story. As long as the American forces can maintain control over two of the VPs, then PFC is absolutely happy. Uh, so, 133 tickets and counting right now for Happy Cat. But these Panzer IVs are looking dominant. I've got to say, the double Panzer IV strat, I was skeptical until I thought it through. And yeah, OKW Panzer IVs are really good, aren't they? We are definitely controlling this, uh, 
this American player. Uh-oh, the Jackson exposed here. The Panzer IV is just going to run straight into that. Where's the other Panzer IV? Nowhere to be found, actually. Kettenworth are creeping forward, but American infantry will screen that one away. Sprint coming down off the captain at a crucial moment. And, uh... No harm, no further harm will come to that Jackson. Okay, we're going to have Scott for PFC and a Jagdpanzer for Happy Cat. And I love this Jagdpanzer, man. This Jagdpanzer has got a lot of nice stuff, a lot of ablative units to hide behind. The, the infantry, the two Panzer IVs. If micro correctly, this, this Jagdpanzer ought never to be under threat. And Jagdpanzer's DPS against vehicles is scary. You know, it's like super good. The rate of fire, if you get any veterancy onto it, Combined with its camouflage ability, this could be really good. I love a good Jagdpanzer, and this could be a time for the Jagdpanzer to shine. All right, Volksgrenadier on the chopping block here. L lucky not to be wiped, actually, by the explosive shell off of that Sherman. And American forces will take charge of central VP. And like I said, that's the crucial thing, keeping this Axis player on the clock. That's all that matters here. And Happy Cat, you know, for all the fuel spending, for having access to this amazing tank hunter, which, which which could be very nice in this game, I grant you, the core infantry roster for this Axis player is exhausted. It's very small. We're having a hard time, even with five-star veterans' bulks. There's only two squads of them, and we're having a hard time pushing onto these VPs. And uh, So there we go. The Axis player once again under the clock. 128 tickets and counting. And here comes the next wave of Axis infantry trying to retake it. No MG on Overwatch right now. We've lost one of the 50 cals, actually. I didn't realize that. We've lost one of the 50 cals out of this American roster. And Happy Cat somehow is actually in just a kind of an okay position in this game. Now, the Scott is going to make life hard. I do like putting that into the roster. Oh, uh, these Volksgrenadiers getting cut down. I hope we haven't forgotten about them. Oh, no, we can't lose the Volksgrenadiers. We just don't have the manpower to replace these squads. The Panzer IV is going to come forward to try and save the day. Obersoldat and going to try and complete the cap on this point. The five-star squad of Volksgrenadiers do get away. The Jagdpanzer coming in deep. The Scott on the chopping block. The Jagdpanzer will eat that one up for breakfast. Mmm, yeah, lecker. That's a nice kill there. Are we seeing a utility car? Is that for the mines? Wow, he's going to build a utility car. Both of the Panzer Fours, though, right now are stricken. The, uh, the the Jackson is on the prowl here, hunting for a Panzer IV. And there are... Oh, how good is the armor on a three-star Panzer IV that it bounces a Jackson round at what was essentially only the longer side of mid-range? And the Jagdpanzer in the flank of this American armor is... Oh, look at the rate of fire on this thing. Even at one-star vet, it fires so quickly. And it's pretty damn accurate, you know, with great penetration. Dear God! This but Sherman taking a bit of a dive here. The Panzer IVs could come forward and try and punish the utility car as well. Going to be looking around, angling for some way of accessing that Jagdpanzer. And the... Oh my god, he loses a Rifleman squad! The light guns... And with the loss of the Rifleman squad, I actually think the German army becomes better now. That was the tipping point for me in terms of power. Now... If, as soon as PFC loses control over one of these VPs, how do you ever retake it with this tiny infantry roster? We don't have the manpower to be replacing these losses. So this is really difficult. Anti-tank light gun, now operational. Is that what it gets at 5 star? Does it become good against... Does it really become good against tanks? It increases penetrating hits! Fair enough. That's ridiculous. Yeah, I mean, you know, this is probably not the first game that these players have played today. And, uh, you know, uh, blood yables in chat pointing out that, yeah, there are some mistakes creeping in. These players are losing focus, losing concentration. And, you know, RTS is difficult. It is a high energy, high exertion thing to be doing. And Company of Heroes 2, of all the RTSs, has some of the longest average game times ever. So... Yeah, mistakes are creeping in. Fatigue is real. These two players are under duress in a big way. Uh, and yeah, we're seeing some mistakes creep in. But I mean, most of the best, most memorable RTS matches or games that you'll ever remember are memorable because somebody made a mistake and that put the game into an interesting place. When both players play flawlessly, which I grant you almost never happens, those games don't tend to look that great. Uh, some, like usually, asterisk, like most of the time. Anyway. These Storm Pioneers have their work cut out for them, uh, desperately trying to run around and repair all of the Axis armor. Many holes in many Panzers needing attention right now. Uh, four star Panzer IV getting increased accuracy on the main gun. So, Jesus, that Panzer IV, quite the force to be reckoned with. Now, here comes the Axis infantry. The 50 cal just now getting set up, but a little late. So, middle point gets decapped. 
And wow, actually having to fall back in the face of... Uh, what is this artillery barrage? Is that the tank barrage? No, 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 sorry. That is the zeroing artillery. Okay. So yeah, absolutely right to fall back about 50 cal. Zeroing artillery. Very expensive at 300 munitions, but it takes no prisoners. If you do not move those units, they will die. So that is actually going to be used here. 300 munitions. It might not look like he's getting a lot of value out of this artillery cover, but we're capturing middle VP. And I don't feel like PFC actually has the muscle or the mass in this American infantry roster to get on top of these victory points reliably or easily at all. This is going to be really difficult. Five-star Obersoldaten. Oh, God. This is going to be some brutal stuff to deal with. Has PFC lost? He's got 367 tickets. You know what? So time is a luxury that PFC most definitely does have. And if we see any wipes on this Axis Core Infantry, any wipes, any wipes, then... You know, the game gets very hard for Happy Cat, but we're building up a bit of a manpower float here. You know, I wouldn't hate completing the tech tree here for two reasons. If we get the mechanized regiment H, if we get the mechanized um, building for OKW, then we have more repairs, and we do need more repairs right now for OKW. And then we have the tech tree completed, and who knows? Down the road, if this game goes long, a King Tiger would pretty much break this deadlock if, if there was a deadlock. Oh god, the Yagpans are getting up to two stars of veterancy in a very risky place, though, taking fire from a Kettenworth. A Jackson coming in. Double Jackson we're up to now. Double Jackson and the, the uh, Jagpanzer will die. So, okay, a nice pickup there for PFC. But Happy Cat has the has the money to, to replace it if needed. But I don't know that that's the smartest choice right now. But hang on. American units are pushing hard. The Lig field gun just making them pay so hard. And this actually, this 50 cal is actually not capping mid, which is horrible. That is, that is so unlucky, I feel like, for PFC. He probably really did think, yeet! That guy gets yeeted. Um, that, that, is, that is really unlucky that he's not capping that point there. Yeah, so, I mean, the M40 was gotten for the mines. I think that's obvious. But I haven't actually seen any mines, because there's been a lot going on. I've not even been actively looking for mines. But I haven't seen any mines, and I've not seen any mines get any, uh, get any game-changing hits yet. But I like the idea, and it's, like, low cost, right? An M20 at this stage in the game is a low cost, um potentially high reward choice so uh, that's smart i like that okay i mean double jackson what have we got now american units are so hard to keep track of because they keep jumping out their vehicles we've got double jackson scott stewart is the sherman still alive yeah yeah we've got double jackson scott m40 sherman stewart so that is Six. Double Jackson, Scott. Um, oh, sorry, five. Five vehicle units to be microing. PFC. I I would love to see the heart rate and like blood adrenaline content levels for PFC right now because that is high intensity micro for sure. American forces are incredibly strong, but they're, they, they they do require quite a lot. Like you have to be doing stuff a lot all the time. Many clicking, much off button pushing. Anyway, looks like this Jackson on the right flank gets beaten off by the Panzer IV and the uh, Kettenwerfer. And uh, Axis forces maintaining control over mid-VP. Now, 325 tickets and slow bleeding right now for PFC, so we still have time. And we need to build up the manpower and get some more infantry. Uh, that's what we need right now for PFC, so that we can access these victory points and actually start timing out this Axis player again. Kettenwerfer gets taken out. Five-star Panzer IV, but in a nasty way... This is a lot of Jacksons and a Sherman, but actually, you know, I still got plenty of health. Oh no! The M20 utility car, that's an unforced error, gonna come straight on in, gets picked off by the Schwer Panzer HQ and the waiting Panzer IV here. And is this just one of these games which, like, the under the um, OKW player is able to sustain the underdog position long enough that- Oh god! Oh no, losing a Jackson! Okay, this is not sustainable. The, these are not the units that we can be losing. The utility car, okay. Even the Sherman, maybe. But the Jacksons... <gasps> the Volksgrenadier's going down, though. So, okay, both players just, like, the fatigue creeping in. There's a lot of plates to be keeping spinning. And some porcelain is being shattered right now. Are plates made of porcelain? I don't know. Whatever. Um, <laughs> uh, this Panzer IV is in a bad way, but he's going to get out of there. The Jackson actually not in position to punish. Actually going to roll forward. So risky. USF managed to retake mid. Another Sherman on the queue. This Axis army is tiny now, though. So small. 
He's lost his um he's lost his veteran uh light guns as well. So many squads on the field here. Rakettenwerfer, Rakettenwerfer. Uh that's a BAR. Rakettenwerfer, light gun. So there's three Rakettenwerfers and a light gun here. Whoever can access them first can basically get an army for free almost. Like that's pretty good. Um here comes the sector artillery again. Sorry, the zeroing artillery. Going to come on down here. Not quite sure what the point of that is right now. He's going to get the Jackson out of there. Um, four support weapons for the taking, indeed. Which, to be honest, both players just desperately need more units right now. So, yeah, that would be epic. If they could grab those. Volks Grenadiers will be rebought here for Happy Cats, and they are desperately needed. Uh, and, you know, PFC desperately also needs more infantry 308 tickets slow bleed so pfc has got time here still this is fine absolutely fine we can play for time a little bit we can lean on our scoreline advantage to recover our infantry losses get some more manpower i mean he's rebuying the jackson which like puts us back up to double jackson but i mean that is fine but we really need to be rebuying riflemen. That's the or, or just rear ash. We could we, we could even probably lean on rear ash here actually. Good God, these two Panzer fours have been monstrous. Oh my God, the five star Panzer four is like it's like Obersoldaten against infantry. Look how quickly it's killing this three star captain. Dear God, I realised there were some shells coming in from the other Panzer four as well, but that is a that is an eye watering rate of infantry DPS that is coming out of this OKW army. And, I mean, that, that is how you win grindy, VP-based wars of attrition on small maps. It is with infantry DPS and suppression and AoE if you have it. And right now... Actually, Happy Cat just has the DPS. I mean, oh, he's going to get that 50k. Yeah, PFC gets the 50k out of there. But this is becoming increasingly desperate from the American player. So strange. Stacking a lot of manpower right now, actually. I would love to see just more riflemen, to be honest. Uh, PFC should really get another lieutenant, says Androphite. Um, which, welcome to the chat, buddy. Not sure I've ever seen you around here, around these parts before. But, um, why another lieutenant and not more riflemen? Is the lieutenant cheaper? No, it's the same cost. So why another lieutenant and not more riflemen? Help me understand. Gonna rebuy a 50 cal in any event. Um, I don't know about that. Okay, he gets the five-star Panzer IV. That is a massive pickup. These Jacksons, at last, finding their mark and will at last eliminate that in incredibly powerful and annoying Panzer IV. And with the demise of the five-star Panzer IV, I mean, now it's double Jackson and soon to be double Sherman against one Panzer IV? Uh, is that sustainable for the OKW player? I don't know. This Panzer IV is going to come in deep here looking for the Sherman. I mean, not even that deep, actually. Gets the Sherman at least. But now the two Jacksons are here. So I think that's a fine trade for PFC. That's okay. He's going to get this second... Uh, he's going to get the second Panzer IV for sure. You have to get the Jacksons out, though, bro. Let's, let's get them out. We want to get them both out, not just one. Oh, God. Uh, you know what? He can probably still survive even losing this Jackson. And the Rakettenwerf are actually getting gunned down by the captain those 1919 lmgs do a lot of dps especially to weapon teams so the jacksons will sneak away wow just when you thought this game couldn't get any swingier uh both of the panzer fours go down for the trade of just one sherman really um so now it is just the okw infantry with no hard at against double sherman double jackson no 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 sorry single sherman double jackson yeah yeah of course because he did take out a sherman so yeah, this is um, going to be rough. Oh no, he gives... Uh, what was that? He gives the Obersoldaten. Oh no, that was an MG34 squad. Oh Christ, I didn't realise he built an MG34. Oh yeah, the Obersoldaten's still alive. Well, I mean, that has to be game, right? As soon as the American player gets to grips with these victory points, that has to be game. There's just nothing left in the tank for Happy Cat. Did he complete the tech tree? Nah, there's no chance of a Hail Mary Tiger, uh, Tiger 2. He doesn't have the manpower, not even close. And, okay, he's going to steal a 50 cal. That's a nice pickup. Uh, steals a BAR onto the uh, Storm Pioneers as well. Good stuff. I appreciate it. I like where your head is at. I still think you're dead. 49 tickets. And no answer for tanks, of which you are facing several. Uh, so I think you're dead, right, Happy Cat? 
I'm racking my brains here. PFC is prioritizing building LMGs, uh, sorry, um, HMGs, like, so hard as well. Can we just think about that for a second? He's, built, he's bought so many 50 cows this game. Oh, and that's game. Sorry, I was just taking a second there to read chat. That will be game. Happy Cat has to be, is, is forced out of the game in response to the triple cap finally getting established by PFC. And there's just no way of getting getting to grips on a map that's being patrolled by a Sherman and a Stuart and all this horrendous American infantry that's left over. That's it's just enough here. So PFC here going to take a pretty handy win there. Really nicely done. Although it looked dicey at several stages, PFC always had this victory point reserve, having had the OKW player kind of in a disadvantaged position since the early stages of the game. And uh, Happy Cat there almost stabilizing on the back of OKW's fantastic ability to... If you, if you survive as the underdog for long enough with OKW, that, that five-star veterancy advantage can really pay through. And we saw those Panzer IVs, you know, both getting to four-star, one getting to five-star, and nearly, nearly swinging this game back again for Happy Cat. But I feel like Happy Cat never really had the spare manpower to invest in um, MG34s, which were really needed to concrete control over the middle of the map and, like, control the horrendously powerful American infantry that was pushing through. Though having said that, now I think about it, Actually, the American infantry got largely decimated by light guns and tanks, and uh, so there actually weren't that many squads after a certain point, so maybe those MGs actually weren't needed after a while. Um, a really interesting game from a composition point of view. Happy Cat going for the super early light gun, which, to be fair, looked fine. Mm, but I still think you need the Raketenwerfer before the light gun, especially where you scout Lieutenant. Even if you scout Captain, because, I mean, how do you deal with a Stuart or a Flak Half-Track if you just don't have a Kettenwerfer? It's really hard. Um, and we saw that that Stuart put the uh, OKW player onto the back foot, and uh, it's off the back of that that uh, PFC was able to close this game because, you know, the uh, OKW player just didn't have the, the tickets left to, to sustain this battle. Uh, a kind of a really interesting game there from both players. Um, I think I basically liked most of the composition choices from PFC, which, to be honest, were pretty out there. Buying a lot of 50 cals, buying a lot of Jacksons, uh... Even the Scott, I think I really liked. It was unlucky that that got picked off. I really liked the Mortar Half-Track as well. Um, yeah. Um, <laughs> A-game angst. Absolutely. Don't forget to give me a follow if you enjoyed the channel here, guys. Uh, it's it's uh, I'm casting Monday, Wednesdays, and Fridays. And uh, <laughs> in the words of A-game angst, Magpie's casting is lit. And uh, yeah. <laughs> I'm not afraid to agree. That's cool. We have had some follows, which I really do appreciate. I apologize to all of you um, who are new to the channel. My um, follow alerts are broken at the moment. I'm switching service provider and uh, those are going to be working. But in the meantime, I can manually shout out. Thank you very much, Androfight, for your follow. That is much appreciated. Thank you very much. Uh, Blackfish74, Tryhard Nubosk. Uh, thank you all very much for your follows. That means, that means such a lot to me. And thanks a lot. To, uh, who have we got there? Bloody... Bloody FY balls. Is that bloody yay balls? Sorry. What hell of a screen name you've picked there, friend. But thank you very much for showing up. Thank you very much for the follow. Your support means a ton. There's probably been a, been a couple of other followers there which have been scrolled off the top of the event list, for which I apologize. I'm going to get all this shit fixed. But this is only my second week of streaming on Twitch. So, you know, I'm very much new at, um, new at all this stuff and learning, uh, learning pretty fast as I go. So hey, hello, this is my face, I'm Magpie842, if you guys are new to the channel and not seen me before. This is the schedule once again before I sign off. We're casting on Mondays, Wednesdays, Wednesdays and Fridays, 1100 hours GMT. Uh, that's Midday, hence the name Midday Magpie, which is kind of the format that we're doing. We're casting some Company of Heroes 2 every day, and then if I have some more time after that, we're just doing whatever I feel like, playing some games or whatever. Uh, so yeah, um, it'd be a pleasure to have you live, uh, to have you join us live on twitch.tv slash magpie842. But if you can't join us, I always upload the VODs to youtube.com slash magpie842. Uh, you can also catch me on Twitter, at magpiecaster, um, all one word. And uh, just in case there are any announcements or anything like that, uh, like today we had a slight schedule alteration because uh, I had something came up. So that's where you'll find information on stuff like that. Once again, thank you very much to everybody out there uh, for tuning in. It means the world to me. We had like we had like 40, 30, 40 viewers, even 50 at some point today, which is like radical, which like blows my mind. Uh, it's just super cool. Um, 
that we're just doing this in like week two of streaming uh like i get that there's a pandemic going on and like everybody has loads of extra time but still it's super cool thank you very much for joining me and uh yeah i'll catch you all on wednesday uh so this for now magpie 842 signing out oh actually you know what it occurs to me i'm gonna raid someone let's see who we can raid i need to get better at remembering to do this uh, who's casting Company of Heroes 2 right now? Alright. Let's get the raid on. We're gonna get our raid on. Ba -ba -ba. Company of Heroes 2. Alright. Who's playing? We've got some Korean guy, Duffman. Captain S. Price! Yeah, we're gonna raid Captain S. Price for sure. Alright guys, stay tuned for the raid. Da -da -da. Raid. Captain S. Price. All right, everybody. Enjoy Captain S. Price. He brings the spice. Yeah, Twitch raiding. Nice to pass the torch. 28 viewers are ready to raid. We are raiding in.